The regular meeting of the Southern Shores Town Council for February the 4th, 2014 is now in session. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to join me in a moment of silence, but uh, many of us in this room know Dr. Hurley and Dr. Wilkinson. Uh, some of you may know that Dr. Hurley's dad died this past week, uh, was buried here in Southern Shores in Cemetery. He is also Dr. Wilkinson's father-in-law. He was married, Dr. Wilkinson is married to, uh, to uh, Dr. Hurley's daughter. So in your, in your moment of silence, you you celebrate what you wish to, but it would be nice to have a, a thought from them. Thank you. Thank you. Council, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's made and carried. <clears throat> I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, one of the members of our county commissioners, Mr. Jack Shea, is here tonight. I appreciate him being here. Jack, wherever you are, thank you. Yes. There you are. <laughs> He's here uh, checking up on us, I think. Good, <laughs> good to have you here. I need a motion, Council, to approve the consent agenda, which includes the approval of the meetings of the minutes of January the 7th and January the 21st, and also the tax pickup and releases. Tax pickups and releases, I'm sorry. Do I have a motion? I motion that the consent agenda be approved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. It's now time for our staff reports. Uh, our finance officer, Bonnie Swain, with a quarterly report for us. Good evening. Good, good evening, Mr. Mayor and the council members. I'm here to give you the quarterly financials for um, October 1 through December 31st of 2013. <clears throat> and basically, you can see by the graph up here, I was just going to kind of summarize the information that you've been given. As of December the 31st, 70% of our ad valorem taxes have been collected and submitted to us by their county. The total revenues collected for the first six months of the fiscal year were at 65%, which is slightly above where we are budgeted for the fiscal year because six months in we should be at 50. Um, <clears throat> most of this increase is a result of the, t um, the two cent tax increase that we had in fiscal year 12-13 uh, for the shared revenues. There's a year lag be in those being distributed. And <clears throat> as, as a side note, you probably notice when I send you your reports each month, um, we used to get the Powell Bill payment in a lump sum payment. We get half of that in October and we got the other half of that in December. So we now have received 100% of that, and it came in about 4,600 over budget. So that was good news as well. And also, you will see reflected in, in November the revenues that were transferred in from the Capital Reserve Fund to the General Fund to cover the cost of the Juniper Bridge, um, the bill that we got for 361000 <clears throat> So that's pretty much the revenues. On the expense side, just like I was talking to um, um, Council Member Hess before the, the meeting, the first six months, a lot of times it's a timing issues. We may get a bill one year in October. We may not get another, you know, the bill for this year in November. So the first six months is normally always just a timing issue. So if you see anything there that you have a question about, I'll be glad to answer that. But basically, um, <clears throat> The increases were due to us having to pay for the Juniper Bridge. And we also got um, two police grants um, for security cameras for the buildings and for a new radar trailer. 
the way that those work, we have to pay the full expense in full, and then we are reimbursed 75% of the total cost. So that's why those numbers look the way that they do. Um, also, we did transfer um, a total of 600 or 856, 210,000 from the general fund to the capital reserve fund for our capital projects, streets, and so forth. And of course, that was an increase from the prior year of 672,815. All in all, all of the departments are at or below budget for the first six months of the fiscal year. Are there any questions? Council, <clears throat> any questions? Thank you, Bonnie. All right, thank you. It. Our town planner, Wes Haskett. Thank you and good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. <clears throat> Uh, for the month of January, uh, I have a brief report for you tonight. There were six zoning permits issued, 20 building permits, which con consisted of one new single family dwelling, two additions and alterations, two remodels, and 15 others. There were 65 building inspections conducted at 39 job sites, and there were uh, currently 12 single family dwellings under construction. Uh, finally, the total amount of fees collected in January was $5,432. Uh, also, regarding the comprehensive uh, Southern Shores Comprehensive Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan, uh, the second steering committee meeting will be held this month on uh, February 19th at 3 o'clock. And the uh, first public workshop will also be held the same day from 5 to 7 here in the Pitt Center. And I encourage anyone to come and uh, participate. Uh, the, pr the purpose of the workshop will be to gather input on current conditions for walking and bicycling in Southern Shores and to begin discussing opportunities, challenges, and issues as defined by the workshop participants. And lastly, uh, item number three for the town planning board meeting this month, it will be held on February 18th at 7 p.m. here in the Pitt Center to consider uh, ZTA 1401 and 1402. Uh, both applications were submitted by town staff to amend the town's current ordinances regarding the board of adjustment and uh, wireless facilities. And this was discussed at last month's meeting when we asked you all uh, for uh, advice on whether to move forward to the planning board or not. That concludes my report. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Wes, is there any uh, progress to report on the AT&T tower? No, sir. Uh, it is still in the same, same place it was uh, this time last month. Uh, they've submitted everything for a building permit application minus one, one piece. Um, so it's still, the ball is still on their court. Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Chief Cole, David. Good evening. Uh, the police report for the uh, month of January 2014. Uh, officers responded to 1,038 calls for service. Uh, some of the breakdowns are uh, business checks, they conducted 159. Residence checks, they uh, conducted 306 of those. We had 11 mutual aid calls to uh, other police agencies. Uh, 34 direct traffic, we had 15 suspicious condition calls, uh, 23 alarms, 64 traffic stops, and they conducted an extra 254 extra patrols for the month of uh, January. Uh, as you can see, there's a breakdown. We had 13 actual incidents that were reported that uh, investigators are following up on. Uh, we had two arrests, handed out 23 written citations and another 23 warning citations out of those 64 traffic stops. Uh, one uh, parking in right of way, and we had one traffic accident for the month of January. Questions? Council. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Moving right along here, it's coming, we're coming up on time for public comment, and I want to comment on that, uh, if I may. Bob Harvey is not here tonight. Uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, not mention him on purpose, but he's not here tonight to make his report, nor is there a report from the Planning Board, which is the two agenda items I kind of skipped over, but there's no, no report from either one of those. We're going to put Bob Harvey in time out, I think. If he doesn't show up soon, but I'm only kidding about that. Um, 
with, with regard to the public comment, if you're here tonight to speak about the uh, resolution that we're considering, I would ask that you hold your comments until we come to that, the old business section of our agenda. If you're here tonight to speak about any other subject, uh, dogs on the beach, whatever you might want to talk about, then you could go ahead and speak now. I don't have a list of names of anybody who signed up. Is there anyone on this list who would like to speak about some subject other than the, than the um, if you would, uh, I'd ask you to come up to the, um, the podium and um, introduce yourself and, and give us your address. Thank you, Laurie. Two glasses to see. <laughs> My name is Lori Williams, and I'm here today representing the League of Women Voters. Uh, I'm here to thank the Town of Southern Shores for their support in the publication of the yearly citizen guides, and I will be presenting them with their copy. You know, we do thank your continued support every year. This publication has been published every year since 1988, and 6,800 copies were published this year and they are being distributed throughout the county from Duck to Hatteras to Manio to the mainland. Uh, they will be put in various places, the town halls, libraries, you know, various public buildings, the bomb center, those sorts of things. You know, as most of you know who are familiar with this publication, it's a very valuable, useful publication to find out all sorts of information about services and entities throughout the county. And there are things in this, this book that you can't even find in the phone book. You know, try to find the phone number for the, po the post offices. You can't do it, <laughs> as most of you probably know. But, you know, we do really appreciate your support and the support of the other people who've contributed who are listed on the back of the book. Um, as, and the guide is under the auspices, I have to use our general spiel, of the State League of Women Voters Citizen Education Foundation. And that's the public outreach part of the league. Um, the League is a nonpartisan pol political organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in government and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Um, membership is open to men as well as women. We do have many men members. Uh, I am the membership chair, so if any of you are interested in joining, I do have membership applications back at my chair. You know, do see me. Uh, some of the things that we actually have coming up are quite interesting. On February 19th, we have a, po a program at Jockey's Ridge on energy from the ocean. So that'll be kind of an interesting one to see what some of the future may hold for us. And on April 29th, we have the rescheduled meeting with Dr. Jill Atkinson, who is head of public instruction for the state of North Carolina. Uh, it had been scheduled earlier in the year and had to be postponed, but she will be coming here. She represents the entire state education program, and she will be talking about the state of education in North Carolina and some of the things that's happening to education in our state. And that will be, as I said, April 29th at 7 p.m. at First Light High School. And hope to see some of you there. It should be a very interesting and informative meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. I uh, Jim Widmer, Wild Pony. I'm sorry, Jim. I don't I don't see you on this list. And I don't, you're, you're not, you're well, I'm a number four uh, uh, for both providing comment and also uh, question and answer. But I, I, I'll call on you. Oh, okay. Didn't know it was in order. Yeah, I'll call on you. Thank you. The league does lots of really, really positive things for our community, not just our town, but the entire Outer Banks and probably most of the country. But here they're very active and recently many of us went to a, to a scheduled uh, talk uh, by Willow Kelly with reference to the, both the flood insurance and the homeowners insurance debate or potential increases that are being discussed. And it was very worthwhile. Uh, a number of us from council were there and we all, we all learned from it and we all were able to come back and take 
a little more proactive position as far as uh, who to contact and what we, should, what we should try to convince them to do or not do. Very worthwhile. I just, I can't say enough good things about the job the league does. Thank you. Our next item of business is the old business, the, uh, the consideration of res resolution number 2014-0201. And I'm going to ask for, um, for your questions on that, your comments on that are more than welcome. I would, I would remind you that uh, a couple of things. Try to limit your, your comments or your questions to three minutes or less, number one. Number two, if you have a comment or a question that you want to make and someone's already made it, made that point, consider your, your, your neighbors and your friends in the audience and don't take their time, not just our time, we're getting paid to be up here, but, but take, consider other people's time with that. Um, And a couple, just a couple of things I want to say before I open the floor to comments and questions uh, relative to this resolution. Um, there's some things that, that are important for you to know. And I think for the most part, these are factual statements. I have an opinion at the end, which I'll share with you. But first thing I, I want you to know is that we have no beach nourishment project planned at this time for our community. That's something on the hopefully the far horizon. We don't know that because we can't control storm events, but we hope it's on the far horizon. If, if we had to do it at all. Second thing, there's no need under the provisions of the authority we are considering to take one, anyone's property. There would be no transfer of ownership as a result of this beach nourish, if we ever do a beach nourishment project. There's no plan at the town level to seek any provision allowing for public access to our beaches for anything other than nourishment. In other words, that access would be strictly limited to that, that particular function. There are no guarantees at this point that the authority we are requesting or plan to request or may request after we consider this, uh, this resolution uh, will be granted by the legislature. They, they could very easily turn us down and say, no, we, we're not going to allow Southern Shores to, to, to participate in this, in this particular authority. Finally, uh, as many of you probably know already if you've gone on our website, under the current North Carolina General Statute, Southern Shores has the power of eminent domain for some 27 different infrastructure and service needs. There are things that Southern Shores has been allowed to do under the, under the law for since our existence, since we went into existence. Uh, nine of those, of those needs, infrastructure and service needs, are available to us through something called the accelerated procedure which most of you know is something called quick take. We've had those on the books for years. As to my knowledge, our town has never exercised any condemnation proceeding. They've talked about it. We've never exercised it. Um, my opinion, which is what it's worth, uh, is that we're better off to anticipate and to plan for rather than react to any situation. And I see this as one of those opportunities when we have, we have, or one of those times, when we have the opportunity to plan for something and anticipate the need for it, even if we never use it. It's the old adage, you better to have it and not need it, need it and not have it. At this time, I'll turn the meeting over to, to our town attorney, Mr. Ben Gallup, for his, for his comments and hopefully an explanation of the process for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm I'm going to attempt to try and explain a little bit of the authority that exists already that the mayor has alluded to and what the town is trying to do or considering tonight um, asking the legislature to do um, in the hopes that I can under, uh, head off some of the questions you may have. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know that I'll be able to do that, but I'm going to do my best. Um, as the mayor alluded, that all municipalities in North Carolina have uh, certain authority to condemn or use eminent domain to acquire property for various purposes. Those purposes include things like uh, streets, roads, alleys, electric power, water supply, wastewater, gas, public transportation, solid waste, cable television, off-street parking, airports. I'm not sure that an airport will fit anywhere in <laughs> Southern Shores, but I've got one not too far from me on Roanoke Island. Maybe they could fit one here. Um, Stormwater management, uh, parks, playgrounds, recreational facilities. Is this, are y'all getting some sort of feedback? It sounds like I'm getting, it sounds to me strange. Um, 
hospitals, storm water and drainage, city halls, fire stations, any sort of office building that the town may need, um, drainage programs, historic properties, and improving public wharves. Some of those things are uh, under the auspices to have what uh, the mayor has called uh, accelerated procedures. Okay, the accelerated procedures that we're talking about are not really that different than the standard procedures. The real difference is when the ability to possess the property and actual ownership, the equivalent of going to your home when you bought your home and you had a closing and the deeds were signed and transferred, you became the owner, you could then go and get the property, go on the property and do what you needed to do. The difference between the accelerated procedures and the standard procedures is that when the town files an action for condemnation, uh, the title vests at that time and the town can go into possession. And when I say title, I'm not necessarily saying ownership. It can be an easement or it can be whatever sort of title you may end up uh, seeking through the eminent domain process. But the difference is that it, the town doesn't have to wait to litigate the whole case to determine whether or not it can use the property. In either case, the final answer in reality is just compensation. What the Constitution provides is that the um, government may not take property without paying for it. And the eminent domain process is the process that's put together where the government ends up in whatever situation having to deal with some sort of property interest and then the outcome is that it somehow pays for it. Um, so th that's the basics of, of the eminent domain and the accelerated procedures in North Carolina. And what uh, the mayor alluded to as well is that there are a number of those 20 or so different provisions that are also already subject to the accelerated procedures. So the resolution that's being considered tonight would add two provisions to the town's authority and would add those provisions to the accelerated procedures. Most every other coastal town in North Carolina has uh, considered has had the legislature do this. Uh, of the towns on the Outer Banks, the only ones that don't have it are the town of Duck and the town of Southern Shores. The town of Duck has recently voted to ask the legislature to, to uh, provide the same authority to them as the town of Southern Shores is, ask, is considering tonight. Those two sources of authority, first, would be the engaging in or participating with other governmental entities in acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, extending, or otherwise building or improving beach or erosion control or flood or hurricane protection works, including but not limited to the acquisition of any property that may be required as a source for beach nourishment. And the second one would be establishing access for the public to public trust beaches in pertinent parking areas. Typically, these have only been used, or that I know of, in the Outer Banks primarily for the nourishment projects, to gather easements along the, along the waterway, not from the road to the waterway, not for parking lots. Um, so that is to put equipment in and move equipment up and down the beach, and it's to the, the mean high watermark is where the property ownership ends, and then between the mean high watermark and the vegetation line is privately owned, but it, it's still what you and I would consider the beach when we look at it, and if the town wants to place sand there to help its project be better rather than to have a depression coming from the dunes down into its project, then that needs to have an, e they need to have an easement there to fill that area. And that's typically for the benefit of the property owner as well. They don't want a depression there. They would rather have it filled in out in front of them and then filled in and have it all leveled out to the dune. So those are the two purposes for the easements along the beach. One is so that the town can move its equipment up and down while it's doing it, and two, so the town can give that particular property owner some sand on their property. Um, so most of the time, these easements are granted voluntarily. The condemnation process in other areas has been used um, very minimally in comparison to uh, most people giving easements to the town via just signing off on one, or occasionally what happens is the condemnation process is filed and they then figure out, oh, I meant to give you one, and the condemnation process is very quickly ended in exchange for an easement. Um, so that's what the town is talking about acquiring the authority to do. 
And the reason for the accelerated procedures in that case is not necessarily because these projects come about very quickly, because they don't. There's permitting, there's surveying, there's engineering, there's designing, there's funding. There's more processes than you can imagine that have to go on in public meetings before it ever gets to the process of considering this. But what happens quickly is all of a sudden it all comes together. And there's narrow windows of time, particularly on the Outer Banks, um, because of turtles, one thing, and because the rough water, the other thing. There are very narrow windows of time when these can be accomplished if a nourishment project is going to be accomplished. So if you have to wait six years to litigate whether or not you can put the sand on someone's property and you've got a three-month window to do the nourishment, it really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So the accelerated procedures are there to ensure that you can do that and then you litigate, if, you ne if necessary, about how much you pay for that. And that's how, that's how it works um, so far everywhere that I've dealt with it. Um, one of the things that's been a concern to people is whether or not they would get noticed or surprised or, or have this uh, thrown upon them without knowing about it. And you know, first of all, I just, I just explained that these things don't take, I mean, they're not something that happens all of a sudden. So typically most people have an idea that the process is going along the path. And in other areas, what's happened is there have been letters mailed out that have said, we're going to do a nourishment project. Here's a proposed easement. If you'll sign it and get it back to us, you know, it'll help us out and we'll, and we'll move forward. Most of the easements are typically obtained that way. I, I can't remember the exact numbers in Nags Head, but there were, I think it was seven or 800 properties um, on the ocean front. And I think uh, a little over 100 condemnations had to be filed, maybe 150. And then the majority of those ended up in voluntary transfers of easements once people figured out that that's what was going on. And I think that there are about 18 or 20 that are now litigating about the value of the easements. And that's all that remains. So the majority of people typically recognize that putting sand on their property on the oceanfront is probably going to help them. And that these easements are not taking ownership of their property, that they're uh, providing the uh, the ability for the town to uh, execute the project. Um, so, but even then, the notice procedures, if, if you take away the facts of surveying and engineering and, and everything else that's going to have to go on, there is a 30-day notice procedure under both the accelerated and the standard process. The accelerated process actually has a more rigid um, <coughs> notice procedure because you have to provide a notice with specific point sizes in the type and you have to provide particular information including that you have the right to commence an action for injunctive relief and the right to have an answer to the complaint that's filed. The complaint's the thing that initiates the lawsuit for the condemnation um, and that you have to give a statement to the owner that they consult with their attorney about the attorney's rights. You have to estimate the amount of compensation and describe the property to be taken. The most important factor there is that under the standard condemnation procedure, the property owner would not necessarily have a right to file a uh, suit for injunctive relief. He would litigate whether or not the town had the authority to condemn in the actual condemnation suit itself. But with the accelerated procedure, there's an additional protection for the right to commence an action in that 30-day period for injunctive relief to try and stop the town if you felt that the town didn't have the authority. Um, they, people who have done that so far haven't really prevailed very often, but that authority is there if you had the reason to do it. Um, but either way, the notice is not considerably different, and it's actually more um, burden on the town in the accelerated process than it is in the standard process, as one would expect. Mr. Mayor, that's pretty much all I had to explain the notice portion, portion of the process. I can go into the process, how it would go after uh, a, an action would be filed, but 
typically that's pretty much the same as the standard process. Moving ahead, I, I just uh, reiterate what I said a minute ago, that even though we talk about condemnation and it's kind of a dirty word, it's an ugly word, we're not talking about taking anyone's property, we're talking about the potential need to, to ask them for an easement to use their property. And the term of that, uh, that use could be anywhere from two months or three months to 10 years. You'd probably want to have a longer term in case you had to come back and redo it in five to seven or 10 years, as Nagaset is talking about <coughs> doing now. As you may know, they had a beach nourishment project about three years ago. It's been three years later. It's 90% of it is, supposed, is, is ostensibly still there by pretty accurate measurements. But they're looking down the road and saying we may have to do this again, what they call a re-nourishment at some period of time. So they're, they're preparing for that. They know it's on the horizon. Um, I think it's time for us to, to go into the, uh, the Q&A period, which I would like to do. And I think a lot, of the, a lot of your questions will probably give us an opportunity to address some of the other issues that may be on the others', others minds, may give us a chance as council members, town manager, et cetera, to come up with some, some other thoughts we maybe hadn't, hadn't uh, had a chance to cover. The first person I'd like to call on is Jerry Sullivan. Jerry Sullivan. I live at 31 10th Avenue. Uh, I've already sent an email to the, the council saying that I'm opposed to the quick take resolution. Uh, it subverts our constitutional rights to due process uh, as guaranteed to us under the Fifth Amendment. Uh, I, I'd already sent the message. I won't take a lot of time, but I called town hall today to ask because someone had come to me with a question about signing up for the public hearing. And I was told by a, by a member of the staff that they didn't know what the big deal was, that the council has the right to pass this resolution. Uh, I, let me say I respect this council and hope you will listen to your constituents tonight uh, and have not already made up your minds. I would agree that you have the right to pass the resolution, but I would also say that you have the responsibility to listen and uphold the wishes of the people you represent. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Ursula Bateman. Good evening. I live at 360 Sea Oats Trail. We've been here 21 years, so we have a lot invested in this town. I had something different I was going to say, but I think I just have a few words. I don't want to see the government have any opportunity in any way to take over anything else. They, they have enough rules and regs. You have, you know, we, we gave a couple years ago when there was a problem, the SSCA let people go on the beach and do whatever they had to. I think we have enough ways to work this out without giving the government one more inch. And those oceanfront property owners, they have a lot to lose. They could, they could lose their properties very easily through this. So I ask you to please consider this resolution. No. I don't think many people in the town want it. Thank you. Robin Morgan. Hello, my name is Robin Morgan. I live at 57 Deer Path Lane, and also I own an ocean front at 124 Ocean Boulevard. And I know you, you kind of explained some of this, but I still have a lot of anger and I'm gonna get it out here tonight because it, it frustrates me that the town would go to this length to d adopt a quick take. So I've gotta read it. It says, I'm here tonight to ask you not to vote to adopt the quick take condemnation of land in the town. This topic was brought up at your January meeting and one short month we as residents have had to educate ourselves about what this process is. I am, am opposed to giving the town of Southern Shores the immediate right to take a citizen's property. With this quick take method of condemnation, the landowner immediately loses their property and the landowner has very limited ways to fight to even get it back. The taking of the property by the town troubles me and also the amendments that they have drafted to say it would only take uh, effect in aspects of beach renourishment. When did we as a town say we wanted or would pay for beach renourishment? The second part says the town would establish access for the public to public trust beaches and also parking that attaches to these areas. 
That lets me know that we must be planning on accepting county, state, or federal money that we re would require us to open up our public parking and public beach accesses. I know you say we just want this up in the, on the books for just in case situations, but by making this law, this a law, it opens up changing the whole coastline and southern shores. Um, as you know, to the north of us, the town of Duck is in a partnership with Kitty Hawk and Kildover Hills and has hired an engineering firm to do a feasibility study for erosion and shoreline management. The cost to Duck is a million dollars for that study that is payable over three years and is being funded by the ad valorem tax, which is increasing the tax rate to the uh, citizens in 2014 by 21.6%. The total cost of the project for the town of Ducks is, is $14.5 million, as currently proposed and will be payable over five years. After that time, it has been made clear that the project will require continu continued maintenance and as, and as of yet an undetermined cost to homeowners in that project area. It says, the town of Duck is planning to pay for this work from funds from Dare County, which would be $7.7 million, issuance of a five-year special revenue bond of $6.7 million, and the repayment and interest of which will increase Duck's property taxes by approximately 37%. And they are also establishing municipal service districts. Is that what we want in Southern Shores? My point is that nothing comes free or quickly, especially when we're talking about property owners and their rights. I know that the council and the town manager will um, take their time and hopefully not pass this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Jim Widmer. I'll try to be brief. Uh, Widmer, 14 Wild Pony Lane right behind here. Um, first, good news, followed by some bad news. Uh, the U.S. Senate passed what was Senate Resolution 1846 on uh, the National Flood Insurance Program deferral for four years. The bad news is it's going to be stuck in Congress and so it will probably be implemented on the original language of the law. So if you think you dodged a bullet on the flood insurance program, you probably didn't, in my humble opinion. Um, and so what was SR 1846 has been renamed now to Senate 1926. Following this stuff and trying to do the daily analysis of the impact of things like, uh, well, let me see, certain legislation authorizing the town. Well, why don't you tell us what that certain legislation is and we can um, do our own due diligence on the research behind it. Um, and I'm sorry, I apologize for that. But uh, so I was in touch with the um, uh, offices of uh, Senators Burr and Hagen today, and they were kind enough, one of them, uh, one staffer could give me the update for the information. Well, I don't know what the certain legislation authorizing the town is. Put that in the agenda and it would provide me the opportunity to research that certain legislation and to make such acquisitions via the procedures uh, uh, counselor was uh, kind enough to explain some of those procedures, but I'm sure that's pretty much news to anybody else. So my comment uh, would be that we got to talk a little bit more and get a little, uh, a little more dialogue and a little less of, okay, you're out of time, um, would be helpful. I, uh, I'm not a public representative, but I know about 20 or 30 of my neighbors who are not thrilled with what they can't understand of a, a PowerPoint, you know, bullet uh, briefing. So uh, some of the other items for future topics would be explain the progress we're making on uh, the quality of our life in this community. This is where I live, and these are people I care for. Explain. Um, uh, 
forget the bridge from uh, New Jersey to New York or duck to the you know, <laughs> mainland, but uh, um, the layers between Duck, Dare City, Raleigh, the Corps Engineers, FEMA, FAA, the Coast Guard, NOAA, Air Force, NAV Air, Wildlife Services, that connectivity is lost on a lot of people. Um, I don't like the smell of the parking lot initiative, and I've taken my time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, and Jim. Appreciate it. Bruce Aitkenhead. My name is Bruce Atkinhead and I reside at 160 Clamshell Trail on Southern Shores. As such, I'm one of your constituents. I'm here tonight to let you know that my wife and I are opposed to the Town Council's pursuit of a quick take authority. There is a process already in place for condemnation through eminent domain. That process includes reasonable checks and balances that are absent from quick take. While I have little reason to believe that the current makeup of Council would exercise quit take authority in other than fair and reasonable fashion, I'm not willing to gamble my support on the hope that future councils will do the same. The granting of quick take authority is permanent and could only be repealed through future legislative action. I think we all have a pretty good idea as to the likelihood of that happening. This is an important issue to me and I ask that council not pursue legislation that would grant the town quick take authority for property condemnation. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your time. Thank you. John Boyle. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Boyle. I live at 20 10th Avenue in Southern Shores. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in your opening statement, I believe you said that it was not the intent at the town level to open any public, the public trust, any additional traffic, et cetera. Um, my question to you is, and I'd like someone to be very specific, is that if we had a disaster and we got the federal government involved, i.e. FEMA, do they dictate to the state, dictate may be a strong word, do they mandate to Southern Shores that we allocate certain parking spaces, parking areas for the public. And I'm specifically interested as to the specific impact that that, that directive may have on 10th Avenue, on streets one through 13. I live on the east side, so on the beach side uh, as to parking. Uh, and also for the other streets uh, in Southern Shores. Thank you. Wish I could address that, Peter. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. I'll address that. Um, the current project that the towns of Kitty Hawk, Kill Level Hills, uh, and Town of Duck are beginning, uh, they are using their uh, local funds and also the occupancy tax from the uh, County of Dare, that portion. And there are no state or federal funds in this current project. Um, the speaker posed a uh, hypothetical that if there were federal funds used in the future. Um, what I believe what conditions would be on federal funds and what impact that would have. Um, to currently, as I understand it, if federal funds are used, uh, as in the Corps of Engineers, there are public access requirements as well as parking requirements if a beach is nourished and brought up um, using those Corps of Engineer funds. Again, I'll just have to reiterate what you said, Mr. Mayor. There is no project plan for the town of Southern Shores. Um, that's something in the future that the town wanted to avail itself of those funds and if those restrictions were still in place at that time, that's something the town would have to consider and look at. But yes, he's, they, there, there currently are restri uh, conditions in place that the core uh, mandates if a public beach is nourished with public funds, you, with federal funds. Thank you, yeah. Peter. John, does that answer your question? I, I
if at the time that happens, we will know what the published conditions are if the town wants to consider availing itself in the future of something like that. And there would be federal federal law um, guidelines that would be used. And right now, as I understand it, there's, um, in general terms, there's a requirement for every quarter mile, um, excuse me, every half mile and every mile, I believe. But I can't speak exactly because it changes so often. But there are act public access requirements and then, of course, parking requirements. And again, that's for federal funds not and, and, and not being used in the current project that the three municipalities are engaged in. One of the recent uh, documents I reviewed indicated that it was a f uh, four access points per mile. Uh, we have many more than that, obviously, but we don't have the parking that they would require, like 10, I think it's 10 spaces for each parking, for each uh, access point. Now, that could change, as, as, as Mr. Esco said, that could change in a week or two weeks. I'll give you a little bit of a, a small example, which we, we heard about what, two weeks ago following Hurricane Sandy up in, up in, on, on, the, on the Boston coast and, the, and New York coast, the uh, Boston coast, uh, Massachusetts coast, and the, uh, and the New York coast, the, the FEMA people came in and approached people who had lost their properties, who didn't have flood insurance, and said, if you will agree to take out flood insurance on your home or your property, we will retroactively cover you, but you have to keep that insurance in place for X number of years. Otherwise, they wouldn't have helped them. Now, we're looking at a very, very much a hypothetical situation here. We're talking maybe next month or, or 20 years from now. There's no way to address this in, in concrete terms. I appreciate your question, John, but it's really difficult to answer specifically. Uh, we know what the rules might be right now if FEMA came in and said we're taking over, but because of the, because of the catastrophe, I'm hoping I'm visualizing a non-catastrophe situation just as well. We have a long-term erosion problem, and we start to lose our beaches, uh, like a lot like what's happening right now at Pelican Watch, where we've lost a good bit of the shoreline there. In fact, enough that we're worried about it, and we're hoping that the Kitty Hawk project with their tapering they have to do on the north end of their, of their replenishment or renourishment will help to, to, to ameliorate or, or help to alleviate that problem in, at Pelican Watch. We don't know it will, but we hope it will. I have a name, I can't, is it Mary? Bush. Mary, Mary Bush, is that possible? Thanks, Mary. Thanks. Sorry, I, I couldn't read it. I, I got one beyond, after you, I can't read it, but I'll, I'll struggle with it. Hi, my name is Mary Jo Bush, and my husband and I own property at 81 Spindrift Trail with the anticipation of becoming permanent residents here next year. Um, I drove in from Chesapeake tonight to um, listen to what was to be said and, and to hopefully speak my, my and my husband's thoughts on this. Standing tonight doing the Pledge of Allegiance and saying liberties and justice for all. And what you're proposing here this evening, quick take, what liberties and justice does that provide for those whose lands are involved? You're talking about the processes, the time. We're ha we have things in, st in, in stone now that allow you to do this. It just doesn't let you do it now, quick. You, you're not giving us the opportunity, just like this vote tonight, to understand it all, to find out all the facts, just as the question he asked about parking. Who knows what's going to happen today or tomorrow? No one knew Boston and New Jersey was going to get hit like that. If we put it in stone now, if you do law, whether we ever need it or not, there's that possibility. Whether we request help from FEMA or it's given because it's necessary, it will be there. Why now are we doing this? It makes, and so quickly, it makes me feel there's an underlying reason. I don't understand, I'm sorry, I'm not here all the time. I know some of you are newly, newly elected mayor, I know you are, but why now? If all of this has been here since 1988, why do this now and why do it so quickly? Can anyone explain that? I'll give it a shot. Please do. Well, Mr. Peter, why don't you, why don't you address that? As was stated in last meeting, um, this, this request goes to the North Carolina General Assembly. Um, it's being done now. Oh, it was proposed to the council for consideration now because the General Assembly has a short session um, scheduled for May. And if it's not considered at that session, the town council would have to wait until future 
legislative sessions that may or may not allow it at all. Okay, so, so what's that the is, problem? That, that is why it was uh, proposed to council for consideration at this point in time so that hopefully council for this town could have it in place for years in the future when it's needed. Sir, what, why would they not allow it when it's not a short session? I can't answer that. Then why not take that chance and let your constituents have the time to digest this? I think that was the consideration. I don't think I you're think, being I fair think, here. Mr. Mayor, um, to answer a question, if I could, the, the consideration was just that, that there may not be another time, and so that's why it was considered by the council now. Exactly. Well, I, I don't know that you're allowing us enough time to understand it all. Do all of you understand it? Do all of you as property owners here on the council understand exactly what this may or may not do for the town of Southern Shores? You're all nodding your head yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, are you all in favor? I don't think it's time to take that vote. Okay, but we'll all, we'll all know. We'll all know. Okay, thank you for your time and your efforts. <clears throat> One thirty three Chickahawk Trail. There you go. I can't read I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have much to say, but my name is Candy Roberts at 133 Chickahawk Trail. Um, pretty much everything has been said, so I'll just take a couple of moments. Um, there's something called the law of unintended results. And this is what scares me about what we're proposing here. Um, I listened tonight, I didn't bring anything in writing. I was just listening to everything that was said to really take it to heart and to be wide open and really want to understand. And that's my feeling that we really, really should not pass this. Um, an email went out, I guess you all received today from someone that I know in the neighborhood and she just wanted me to read one section. Um, let's see. On the section I would like to add that is not, it is not reassuring to be told that other Outer Banks localities already are in on this since we, are, um, we sh all should agree that we chose Southern Shores because of its distinctive and cherished beach access, property protections, and common ground. This is not any other town. And she lives on Clamshell and wanted me to, to say that to you. Thank you. William Roberts, is that right? 133 Chickahawk Trail. Um, I think I... I concur with almost everything everyone has said so far. Um, I guess uh, one thing I don't like on the, uh, the quick take is that that reverses the role of the citizen to the government as far as trying to come up with an equitable solution, and it may be just a financial thing, but an equitable solution. When you take it, you have the power. When we own it and you want it, you have to talk to us. This, does, this reverses that and it makes it much harder, I would say, for the citizen to uh, uh, have an equitable chance of doing whatever they do, either it's money or whatever it happens to be. Um, to me, this is, I, I think what everyone else has said, you're asking carte blanche for something that's uncertain. Uh, why not wait, you know, you're saying, well, there's hypothetical this and hypothetical that. Well, hypothetically, things could turn against the citizens of this, of this town. Um, why not wait till an actual event has occurred or there's a more specific plan or a specific understanding for all the citizens to say, yeah, that makes sense, let's do that. Or wait until there's an actual catastrophic event or something like that. My impression, we've only been here for two years, my impression is that the associations which govern consider almost all of the property, common area property and so forth, are very amenable to agreeing with the town to, uh, to do whatever is needed for something like a replenishment. I don't, I don't see why they would change. I don't think they would change. I would trust them probably a little better than just a uh, governmental uh, bodies. So I concur with my wife and we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we are opposed to the condemnation, quick, quick take condemnation. You, you get high marks for that. You get high marks for that. I'll be able to sleep in my own bed. 
your, your, your comments are, are really, really important. They're well taken, and we understand them. I understand them. Uh, one of your primary questions is why not wait and, and see if we need this. And, I, and I, that, that was a question that was asked to me by the president of the Civic Association and I think by the president of the Chickahawk Property Owners Association. Uh, what's the urgency? I can't say. We could have a storm next year that would force us to go back and seek, uh, seek access to the beach or seek access to the beachfront the following year to do a beach nourishment. We don't know the timetable. Uh, the other question you also alluded to or talked to very specifically, we have a good relationship with the Civic Association that owns the property we'd have to cross to get to the beach and some of the, the oceanfront property itself. Our relationship with them is very solid. I don't think we would have any problem, and this was a couple emails I've read too, we'd have any problem dealing with the Civic Association as far as that. They'd probably give us an easement willingly to cross the beaches and, and to do a, a nourishment project if and when we felt it was necessary as a, as a town. I'm more worried about the individual who might say because they don't want the tax increase, they don't want the money to pay the cost of it, saying, no, we don't want it. We're not going to agree to it. And that forces us in a situation, if we're going to be able to do an effective job, to require them to place an easement on their property. Bear in mind, we're not talking about taking anyone's property or taking anyone's uh, individual property away from them. We're talking about having access to it. That's all. Um, we had a question that you want to ask? All we, all we know is what happened in Nags Head. You're absolutely right, Ursula. And I, and I just said that. I just said that. I'm not worried about the SSC. I'm, I'm worried about the individual homeowners who would say, no, we're not going to get involved in this. But this resolution can take your property. No, it doesn't take the property. No, it doesn't take the property. Gallo, would you want to address that? Gallo, Ben Gallo. Right. There, there, are two issue, there are two issues in the legislation. One is to get the authority itself, and the other is to have the accelerated, what you're calling quick take procedure, available to the authority. Right now, we don't have, the town doesn't have the authority to condemn the easement that it might would need to put on someone's property. And that's the first part of this legislation. The second part is to be able to do it via an accelerated process. But didn't you say there's already steps there, they're just not quickly? No. What I said was there are other forms of authority, such as streets, town halls, which not only have uh, eminent domain authority, but also have a number of them have quick take authority. This would not be the only quick take authority that the town has. The town has quick take authority for current, well, currently for streets, roads, electric, water, wastewater, gas, solid waste, cable television, Storm order, drain it. Storm order and drainage. Well, no, I, I, you know, I, Mr. Mayor could, could tell you more about the, the concept, but I think what most towns, take the, the Nags Head project, it's the easiest one for everyone to see, but you can also look at Emerald Isle or Topsail. To some degree, they were responses to an emergency situation in some areas, but they were also proactive in other areas. And you know, one thing that I'm not an advocate for or against, but one thing that I, I would point out is the question about the federal funds. Um, one thing you may have to be careful of about a timing is right now you don't have any restrictions necessarily on county funds or your funds or state funds, but you may have those in the future. The federal restrictions may get worse. Um, and the other question on timing uh, is uh, it, some, people who are new to the legislature may not understand the short sessions and long sessions. It could, even if you have favorable people in office who are um, going to follow along with, um, the, without regard to political party, but with, with local governments, there are long gaps of time where they are not necessarily in, in session and where they don't 
pass things. And it can very quickly go from six months to six years, even if you have people who are helping um, if there's need. Um, in an emergency process, you know, it may very well be that something could be done. But I, I don't think that the town, you know, as I pointed out earlier, I think that most of these processes take a considerable amount of time and a considerable amount of public input goes into them ahead of time. Um, the, in, that, in that regard, the Nags Head case is pretty strange because it took 20 something years or more for them to obtain permits. And they talked about it in, in just about every meeting for 20 years. Um, and that may or may not be the case with most, but even with the ones who are doing it now, um, it's going to take them a year or two before they're before they're comfortable doing a project. So I, I, I think that I, you know some of those things may not be as clear to people who have, who haven't dealt with them. Any any other questions for Ben? I want to call on another person on the list if I can, and then we'll go back to this. Susan Deneen. Hello, I'm Susan Deneen, 61 Deer Path Lane, and. Um, I had a lot prepared, but it seems like a lot of it's been covered already. Um, Peter, for you, you said that you want to quick get this on the short session, and it's five people will be voting on this, and we elected you for your wisdom and for you to represent our ideas. But this is a packed auditorium tonight, and I would venture to guess that most of us are against this quick take. So uh, really, this should go on an election ballot as a resolution for it to be voted on properly. Um, I'm j just a thought, aren't there enough laws in place already to violate our every last freedom as an American already? I mean, we're just living in a time where you're just nipping at our heels, taking one thing after another. When does it stop? It's just crazy. So I beg you, I beg you to consider the long-term ramifications of approving such a resolution, because this is a big deal. And it can prove to be dangerous, and I think we don't need to rush to a short session in May for the government's <coughs> convenience. We need to have our concerns acknowledged here and thought about. Thanks. One last comment. Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll, I have to, I got a list here. Oh, okay. Susan, no, I'm sorry, uh, Ralph and Dana. Dana, what, what's your last name, Dana? Falardo. Falardo, okay, thank you. I want to thank such nice turnout for everything. And when we say that this is a quick issue, it hasn't been that quick. This has been in development behind the scenes before it came to our attention. And I think that the interesting part was the education part that we were able to see and we were forced to look up things that gave us an understanding about what your capabilities are. And that's kind of scary when I found that out. Now, when I'm looking at it, you said in your um, letter that the only thing we wanted to do was add Southern Shores in that little space between two other towns and look all the other towns are there. However, if you go into the government, um, the form that you want us to add our name to, it's this thick to go through. And uh, my concern is also, as you pointed out, it takes quite a bit of time to put things together. And strategically, we're really not in place to do these things quickly. And that is a problem. When we were trying to do the build the bridge and we put all that money into, into the whole situation on uh, the main drag, on Route 12, we put all that money into it. At least Duck did something with the findings. We did nothing with the findings. So when you're talking about beef, uh, beach nourishment and how much money it's going to cost and you're going to have to go through all this practice, why are we not putting together a contingency plan if FEMA, as you pointed out, does come in? And I'm going to do the reverse because nobody up there seemed to want to say, yes, I liked it, no, I didn't like it. I'd like to go to the audience and say, those of you who are in favor of not having the resolution come in, please raise your hand. 
Okay, so these were people who are willing to raise their hand and you are representing us, and I know you give all your time to this, and Mr. Mayor, you're new to this too, but we've been through this for the last 14 years with money being spent on research and never doing anything about it, and this beach nourishment, I don't really see a big problem with the beach nourishment. We have other problems that need to be addressed. This is not quick. It's quick to us, this presentation, but it wasn't quick to you guys. And Ladies, we just want, I just wanted to point that out. This doesn't just pop into your head. And uh, I am happy for the opportunity to be educated about the laws, what you can and can't do. But I'm also disappointed that you do so much behind the scenes without letting us know. We need to open up the understanding better than just a little thing saying, let's just put our name on this law like everybody else. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I'm not real sure what behind the scenes means. I can't meet with my council members as a, as a group except in a public forum. I cannot do that. I can talk to them individually, but I can't plot three out of the five or four out of the five to vote a certain way. The laws prohibit that. I can't even discuss more than two at a time anything to do with, with what we might be considering voting on. The laws are very strict, so I, I don't know. Behind the scenes, I spent, I can't tell you how many hours talking to civic association representatives, to civic association board, to individuals who asked me on the street or stopped me and wanted to, had a question to ask, answer, wanted to answer it from me. Uh, I don't consider that to be behind the scenes. I'm sorry. We're not trying to pull something over on you or, or do something behind your back. You're all here tonight hearing this. You're all here in the comments, and most of the comments are not in favor of us pursuing this. I maintain my position that I'm looking to the future for our town, not what's happened in the past. The, the, the previous town councils may not, may not have felt it was worthy to address this, and it wasn't, it wasn't on, their, on their priority list. It wasn't important to them. Neither were our roads important to them, if you think about it. Neither were our canal systems important to them. So I think you have to look at, at where, what your priorities are and what you, what you think is best for the town. And I think a lot of you here don't agree with me, but I think there's, there's, a, there's a point we have to, a decision we have to make as a council of what's best for our entire community, not just 20 or 30 that show up to a meeting. I appreciate your being here. Don't misunderstand, but. Then why not take this vote out to the public and not do it in this forum? Oh, I see what you mean. Make it a make it a public a public forum a public vote to the whole to the whole town. That's what we were elected for. Mr. Mayor, there's really not a. There's really not a process in North Carolina to do much to do by a referendum. Right. Uh, there, th it may be possible, but either way, one other thing that's important about this is that this isn't like a town ordinance where once the town passes it, it's a done deal. So we're it's, not allowed to file a petition as uh, would be something like a referendum. Uh, the comment I had was, with the community as it is, if some peckerhead didn't grant the town access, some neighbor would probably, uh, you know, give them right away next door. So everybody here lives here for a reason, and we're concerned that we take care of our own. Don't need somebody taking our property to give access to a beach. Don't need somebody to uh, torch somebody's house down because they won't. This is just common sense, and these are common sense people. We don't need anything speedy here. Hell, speedy is an osprey coming out of uh, uh, Oceana. We've got access to resources. This is the resource here. May I respond? Because I've been sitting here quiet listening, because I really do want to hear the public input. But one of the things that I hear still coming back at it is we're doing this so we can take property. We're talking about if you're going to do beach nourishment, a program of beach nourishment, if we have to have it, and let me divert for one second, you say, why now? One of the things that we are trying to do is plan ahead, be prepared. That's one of the reasons we're planting grass on the dunes, so we can do something to help preserve the beaches and dunes. We're very concerned about what's happening down here at Pelican Watch in this section of the beach. We hope it'll be taken care of, as Tom says, by Kitty Hawk. But 
do you realize that Duck was in the same position we were? We were all sitting here fat, dumb, and happy, if you'll excuse my expression, because our beach is worse, better off than Kitty Hawk, Kildover Hills, and Nags Head. The way the sand was flowing, we were great. And then one storm came and it cut through their beaches. And now they have to do something in order to preserve their properties. All we're trying to do, and in the process of this planning, we discovered that there is one thing in the eminent domain and the easement acquisition that we don't have access to, and it's this. It's this one little loophole, if you will, in the law that talks about being able to get the easement for beach nourishment. So all we're trying to say is, if that storm hits us next year, we want to be prepared to be able to go in and respond to it and take, take the issue and take the steps that are necessary because we are planning and we are looking out for it, but it is not to take somebody's home. It's the beach is sitting there and it needs nourishment and two or three houses along the way say, I'm not gonna give you access to do what you need to do to my property. We're saying this gives us one ability to be able to get the easement of that property to fix the sand. It doesn't, it doesn't read that way. It, it does talk about the thing about easements. Answer that. It's, it says under it says a line. Wordsmithing is very important in the law. It says on line 30, whereas the town. Well, okay, then I'll tell you what it says. It says whereas I'm not sure where yours are. Mine says line 30, and it's the one, two, three, four, fourth whereas down. It's the resolution that we would be voting on. And I think that's what you have in your hand, right? I don't know what was sent by an email, 10 and 11. Okay. What it in effect says is the town finds that it may need to obtain property by purchase, gift, or condemnation to execute a future beach project protection project due to the need for easements or otherwise for the purposes stated in the law. And the next part finds that the, the town finds that the timeliness of obtaining property by use of, it says via, easements or otherwise for beach protection could have a substantial effect upon the viability of a beach protection project. It's talking about being able to do, if we end up having to get a storm like Duck did all of a sudden, here's the way that we can take care and make sure we can get all the properties. And as, and as people said, as I think Ben mentioned it, in Nags Head, where a number of people, they started to file this eminent domain on them, they all of a sudden discovered, oh, you just want me to give you the access so you can put sand in front of my house. And, they, and then they boiled down to a few other negotiations with value of a property, et cetera, et cetera. Why, why don't we have, why, why did we not bring in some people from, since you know there was not a lot of support for this, I'm sure you knew this. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, we did, we knew that. The mayor pro tem of Duck was here a little while ago, but she's since left because she was here to see what the she's comments were. Yet, right? proposing. They've right. approved it. They've approved the resolution, and it's up then to the to the government as to whether they're going to give and, it to them. And based on something, I believe Mr. Gallup said, or maybe it was Mr. Roscoe, Peter, that do we happen to have any drafts of the legislation right now? Because we may not have favorable people in legislation. Yeah. What it really means is when we have our representatives, we would go to them and say, is this something that you would really be willing to support for us? But Not that they're friends, but are they acceptable? Is there anything wrong with this? And are they acceptable to it? And basically, as I understand it, they've said yes, they'd be acceptable to it, provided the council agrees with this oh, resolution. So it's already gone to them? No, them. no, no, no. Well, That's, they, they, would be they would be willing to look at it. Is that a way to phrase that as a possibility? I, I believe. Let, 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 Mr. Let, wait a minute, let, let's let one at a time. I believe that's, that would be true. It's, they, they have some knowledge that the town is considering this. Yes. I, I haven't spoken with them, but the, that's the normal process, it's a process you go for, for how this is um, 
accomplished across North Carolina or dealt with across North Carolina. If, if a town is considering a resolution to ask its legislative delegation to put forth legislation for the legislature to consider, it will typically ask them ahead of time, even if we pass this, are you going to have any potential of doing it? And they'll typically say yes or no. And the understanding at this point, I believe, and Mr. Rasco can correct me, is that the legislative delegation, which is a split delegation politically at this point, has said that if you have the, enough support from the council, that uh, we'll put it forward. Now, the interesting thing about that is, even if they say that and the council votes on it and passes it, they don't have to. They don't have the to. legislature right. doesn't have to pass it. The legislature can pass it without the town asking. The legislature can change it. The legislature could do whatever it wants to with it. Can pass it without the town asking, is what you just said? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a North, it's a statute of the state that this would be asking the legislature to modify. It's not something that the town has any real control over other than to ask. But the state hasn't asked. We've asked the state. No. Asked no, we have not asked the state. We've asked our two, our local representatives if they if they if they would support this if we if we do pass it as a majority. No. no, 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 no. And they didn't come to us and ask us. We, we asked them if they would support this. There you, is you, public parking in that resolution, as I recall. It's not just easements. The court stand on the beach. Yes. Yeah. There's public parking in that right. parking. There is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You may. You may. I've got one more person to call on, but you go ahead and speak. Thank you. Where does it say public parking? My name is Lilius Morrison, and I live at 43 Fairway Drive which was the former home of David Stick. And Mr. Mayor, we want, I think all of us in this meeting tonight, want to thank you for the wonderful work you did on canal improvement in this town. Thank and you. we're very appreciative. There, there are two matters really that have emerged from the meeting tonight. The first matter is that of the condemnation of property. Now, on that respect, it seems to me that um, the character of this town would be changed if this uh, request to the legislature were approved. Uh, Mr. Gallup has read out all the different types of property that can be condemned. I would say that the matter of condemning beach property and access to the beach is materially different from that of condemning highways and uh, other parts of the town. The reason being that I think the character of this town would be changed if, uh, public ac if, if beach access became public access for people beyond this town. This town is a very private town. I don't believe on the beach, on the beachfront, there is any commercial property whatsoever. It is all residential. And the people of this, there are more year residents, year-round residents in this town than in any other town. The residents here are thoughtful people, and they have put, they have elected you, we have all elected you, to be open and to have full disclosure and I respectfully submit, we're not getting full disclosure on this matter. I rather think that if there were a lot more clear statement and information given, you might get a positive response. What we are all trying to do is get the whole truth, nothing but the truth, all the facts, and understand it. At this moment, I'd say, we're still gathering information. And on that matter alone, I'm asking you not to vote for this matter tonight, but to take longer to give it consideration. As has been already said, in some ways we're not in a rush. The second thing, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, is the matter of beach nourishment. You said at the beginning of the session this evening that beach nourishment is not on the agenda of the town. However, as the discussion has moved along, beach nourishment is starting to dominate the conversation. I want to ask you straight, 
This matter of condemnation of beach access is the first step towards a beach nourishment program. Is that a fact? A, a right to go onto the beach. For, for, to uh, no, the I'm saying if, 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 the, if the condemnation of public property motion went through, is that the first step towards implementing a beach nourishment project? That, uh, no, ma'am. No. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're going on record as saying that, because I think it's very odd that the town of Duck is about to initiate a $17 million beach nourishment project, um, and this town is not. It, and you're saying this town is not, because the million dollar study was done involving all the towns not just duck and kill Devil Hills. And here we are in the middle of it all. I find it's very strange that we should not be doing on the agenda to do beach nourishment, but duck is. I will conclude very quickly by this. As well as having lived in Southern Shores since 1985, I've been in heavily involved for more than 20 years in the development of sandaling. Sandling is an important part of Duck. In 1991, we had the Halloween storm, which was one of the worst storms that ever hit this area. The Sandling beaches were beat up and the dunes two thirds destroyed. Uh, but not only in the Halloween storm, we had a lot of bad nor'easters the following year. We, t as a community and as a board, which I served on at that time, we took the following steps. Instead of bulldozing the beaches, we trucked in sand, put up sand fencing, and planted beach grass. That was in 1991 and 92. Last year, in 2013, CAMA changed the set, the CAMA setback in the sandling area from 90 feet from the beginning of the vegetation to 60 feet, it reduced the setback 30 feet. Why? Because it wasn't erosion. In the last 20 years, sandaling has experienced accretion, Mrs. Hess. Mm -hmm. I'd say accretion to the point that Ch Kammer changed its setback. Why did that happen? Because we didn't bulldoze the beaches. I, in the, in the time I have, I'd like to walk the beaches of Southern Shores. The fact is, the dunes of Southern Shores, apart from the Pelican project across the street that you mentioned, the dunes are in pretty good shape. And it is my belief that if you maintained a good program of sand fencing and beach grass planting, the majority of the Southern Shores dunes would, would maintain their state. If you were to do a $17 million beach nourishment project, and there were the catastrophe that you, we all know could come, and I won't deny it, $17 million beach pro nourishment project would not protect southern shores from a catastrophic storm such as Hurricane Sandy up in the north. And I think we have to recognize that. What we need to do is just protect against ongoing erosion, and I do believe a sensible sand fencing project, well maintained, would take care of that. And I will repeat, the experience of sandling is a good example of what careful dune management can achieve. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I appreciate that. Martin Miller. First, let me thank you for the opportunity to address this council as well as people in this room. Uh, I'm the owner of, a, of, my wife and I are the owner of an oceanfront that we just recently built at 152 Ocean Boulevard under the good guidance and council of West. And uh, we've got a very significant investment in this town. I'm not a resident here, but I am a resident of Duck. Um, I just wanted to try and establish a little bit of credibility on this issue. Um, 
I'm a former finance executive. I'm retired now. But I have been the finance executive for three Fortune 500 companies in my career. And I've dealt with um, condemnation in many cases as a representative of the company by which I was employed, both in the form of eminent domain proceedings as well as in the form of, albeit by a different name, a quick take process. And I can tell you there, there were a couple of things that I, I need to express as concerns as it relates to the quick take process. One was, in virtually every case, uh, what it came down to was a legal issue of what is the a proper value to be reimbursed by us as a company, in this case a private homeowner or whatever, for the property in which some cases titled had passed under the quick take process. In some cases it was simply an easement and no title passed. Um, but the fact was, we as the owners of the property lost leverage in every case where it was a quick take process. And I recognize that you could probably say that, well, value is established, fair market value can be established in a number of ways. And you're absolutely right. That's the problem. You're never going to agree on what the fair market value is. Someone might say, I invested in this property. What it means to me is what it's worth 10 years from now when I might consider selling it. You might say it's only worth what it is today in a depressed real estate market. You're not going to have a meeting of the minds in a case like that. So that's one concern that I want to express in, in, the, in the eminent domain versus a quick take. Under the quick take, I believe the owner of the property loses leverage uh, in terms of the process of determining value. Um, the second one is in the case of easements. Um, in many cases, it did not result in the municipality that was involved taking the title to the property but they placed an easement on the property. What we lost as the owner of the property was the right to use that property on which an easement had been placed for its originally intended use. It was now an easement basically controlled by the municipality, and the only way to have that easement removed was through a legal process, which could be very costly and take a long time, and in fact might not even work out to the benefit of the initial owner of the property. So that's the other concern I have is um, you may put an easement on a piece of property through this quick take process, which the homeowner is going to lose the right to use that piece of property on which the easement in place for its originally intended use. And it may take them years to have that easement removed, even if the municipality is not exercising uh, the event under which that easement was initially placed. Those are two big concerns I have. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, we talk about beach renourishment. You know, I, I, can't, I can't speak for all the oceanfront homeowners here, but I can speak for myself. Uh, when we had that big, well, we had several Northeasters last year. First thing I did is went down to West, and he put me in touch with CAMA and FEMA, and I was granted a permit to rebuild the dune, which I did at my own cost. And I recognized that not every other homeowner did that, but while I was out there doing it, there was a lot of other homeowners that did, some of which are represented here. Um, and I can't imagine a case where someone who has a significant investment in an oceanfront property would deny you the right to go onto the beach and do renourishment or rebuild the dunes that is in fact going to protect our property. I can't imagine that. Even if we're going to be assessed a cost to do so, I'd rather pay $10,000 and have you do it than to lose a $3 million investment. That's an easy equation to figure out. And I can't imagine anyone else would make a, a different decision. Um, one of the other things, too, is you, you spoke earlier about there's not a process in North Carolina for referendums. Well, in fact, there is. It, it's, it's problematic. It's a lot of work. Um, it may not have ever been executed in this town. But the fact is, a municipality can bring about a referendum for any issue that is deemed appropriate to do so. And if you wanted, if what you're really after, because I happen to agree with the lady who preceded me, that this seems to be an issue about beach renourishment and having access to the beach. If that's the case, maybe it's not a referendum, maybe it takes another form, but why can't you seek preclearance from the majority of oceanfront homeowners to have access to the beach in the event that you ever need to do that, get it pre-approved and do it. You don't have to go through a quick take process and put an easement or a condemnation on our property. You don't need to do that that may take years for us to remove and a lot of expense. The last thing I wanted to say is um, you talked, Mr. Mayor, about the long-term, that you want to represent the long-term needs of this community. 
this community is the people in this room and the people who are property owners here who are not represented in this room. That's who Southern Shores is. We own the property in Southern Shores, not the town council. And I would submit to you that it will be an exceptionally bold statement for you to move this to the state legislature when in fact, I have not heard one person in this room support this. It would be a very bold statement if you who are elected by the people in this room do not represent our wishes. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Very well presented. I appreciate that. Did you have another? Were there two sheets? Oh, no, that was, there's nobody on that there's one. There's no one there. That was, uh, Laurie spoke and Jerry had spoken on earlier. Yeah, that Anyone else like to speak? Any comments, any questions further? Yes, Al. Would you come up, Al? You have to come up, please, if you don't mind, come to the podium and, or the lecture, lectern, whatever it is, and introduce yourself. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Uh, how you doing? My name's Al Euling. I live at 187 South Dogwood Trails. And uh, I'm listening all night, and I've read some of the emails from the Civic Association from the Town Council. And one thing that has been brought up is that we're talking all tonight about number uh, 10 on this. It's 48-42 or 42-48-10, dash and is also a dash 11, which has not been brought up, which is access for public access, parking lots, not just beach nourishment, which is a part of this. Okay? And it has not been brought up, it has not been discussed. So I would just like to, and I think, Mr. Mayor, you said, you know, we're not looking, in the beginning of the meeting, we're not looking for anything for uh, the public. I have in front of me Resolution 230301. And I would just like to read one part of it. It says, whereas the council reached consensus that the town should be committed to seek and act on any opportunity to acquire in, simple, in fee simple title or by easement land to be used for public purposes, enjoyment by its residents, property owners, and the general public. Further, the town is committed to acquiring land for such public uses by gift donation, negotiated sale, or eminent domain. And I think there's a lot of feeling that this being passed on and passed by the council is just another thing that gives the government just that inch that later we're gonna see that open up to a yard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Anybody else have any comments or, or, or uh, questions? Yes. Discuss that. I would I would defer to, to our town manager to, to answer that question for you. We have discussed it with the civic association. As a matter of fact, we haven't discussed it with individual property owners. If we if the town of Southern Shores had a permanent easement over every single um, beachfront owner for access to the beach, I don't think the council would be considering this authority. Yeah. They do not. The town does not have that over the, on the numerous property owners. So I'm, I'm not sure what else um, to comment on that respect, because if that were the case, then certainly you wouldn't be here discussing that. And we wouldn't have to um, seek this or consider seeking this for any planning in the future, because you would already have that access. Have you 
that. No, I, this this administration has not um, attempted to gain negotiate an easement over every single property owner from NC12 to the beach. No. Yes, Robin. Right. Understood. Thank you. Yes, sir. Understood, and I appreciate your comments. Could I clarify something, or at least ask a question? And maybe I'd ask this of you, Ben. When I'm seeing beach access in this, it's in my mind is not the crossing from 12 to get to the beach, as we normally turn about beach access, but we're talking about going along the beach on a beach nourishment project. North to south. North to south. The, the proposal in the, in the legislation would provide for either, but the real purpose, the desire to have it. Even to, I think what the, the situation is, is there seems to be no desire necessarily to do a project of any sort, but the only potential desire for having this is to do a nourishment project, which the practical effect of that is the easements are typically easements along the beach. The legislation is broader than that. And that's the same legislation that's broader than that in and everywhere else that's adopted it as well. But I, as a town, I, we normally work, as we've said before, with the Civic Association to get access to the beach from the correct. road. This is the concern for what happens when we're in the middle of the beach nourishment and somebody doesn't want us to put that sand in front of their property. That, that's correct. If any, if any of the agreeable solutions with property owners work out, they work out and that's perfect and that's how it like I said for Nag said and for every other project I'm aware of, that's how the majority of easements work out. People give a memorandum of understanding, give an easement. But the problem is every one that I'm aware of, and I haven't delved into every one of them, but I'm relatively aware of Nag's heads because we're also their attorney. Um, they, there's somebody who says no. And when that one somebody says no, it puts the whole project in jeopardy. If, if it's a project that, remember the survey and the, all the other stuff that goes into it, the process, that if it's a project that through that process, the town decides it's the thing to do, that one person or 10 people can put a kink in the whole project. It's, that's why this is here, is to avoid having a kink in the project if it ever happens. And I think that you know, everywhere that I've been uh, that's dealt with this has tried very hard to voluntarily obtain easements. And I think in most cases, it sounds like most people here, maybe even the Civic Association, the majority of people are probably are. You might get lucky and everybody would. And this would never get used or never need to get used or never even get considered. But one person at a time. But I rather suspect that if, as has been suggested, 
invested, you got a, a special easy to read from every property, oceanfront property owner in Southern Shores. I think you probably see at least 99%. And if one person goes back, it's not going to make a material difference to the rest of a project. It may not, but everything the engineers told the other towns I've dealt with was that it would, that you need to have the project be able to do the whole thing. And, and if the person doesn't grant that easement, you can't go on that property to do nourishment, and you end up with a gap in your project. But the, the sincere hope, the, the, the sincere hope is that you'd never have to use it, and that, that everyone would do exactly like you're saying. And, and, and certainly the town would, would attempt to accomplish that in the process. The, just, just one minute. I just want to, I want to just expound a little bit on what, what Ben just said. That our original intent would be to, to go directly to the, each property owner with a letter explaining our, our plan, explaining what we, what we hope to do, and ask for their cooperation and to give us an easement. And that's the end of it. If everybody agrees to it, there's no condemnation process involved. None. So. Now, the problem with the memorandum of understanding is that homeowners, property owners change. And you may not be bound by the, by the agreements that your former property owner agreed to. I'm, you're glad to have the town come on your property and do what it has to do to, 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 to protect your beachfront. But the person you sell your property to may not agree as readily as you did with that. That's the only big drawback to that. I'm, I'm personally more in favor of that than any other, other approach. But as long as, it, as long as you recognize that if everybody in this room agreed to allow us to have act, the town to have access to the property, either to get to the beach or to, or to nourish the beach, we don't have an issue. We're not talking about taking anything. You're going to give us voluntarily an easement to go on the property and perform the work. So you, you, you're past the condemnation issue. It's no longer necessary. And that's, that's what's confusing things. We're focusing on the condemnation and not on the purpose of the project. And, and I understand that. So, so why do this now? Why not think this out thoroughly, get the whole community involved, and, uh, and then pr proceed in a more orderly fashion rather than this? Right. Uh, we've addressed that, uh, the reasons why, and maybe they weren't strong enough that would influence you either, either way, but we've, we've tried to address them in, in, the, in the fact that it's, we're, trying, we're trying to anticipate a need, not respond to a need. Now, if that's not enough to, 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 to explain that, I, I apologize. But you're asking for carte blanche now with a lot of uncertainty. Why not right. go through a more orderly process and you can probably get the same thing in a, in a more comfortable way for all the citizens rather than what's been presented here? If it takes two years, it takes two years. Or longer. Or, or longer. That's OK. That's Yeah. It's, it, it's it's exactly what it says it would have access to yeah, for access to for acquiring, constructing, so reconstructing, piece, extending various various flood, erosion, or hurricane protection right, works. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it could. I think the issue may be that this is a difference between kind of having a vote and a veto. You could do all the work, you could prepare all the whole project, and then you don't. And then, well, then you don't get this, and you never can get it. And this is this is a complete stop. I mean, it would stop the entirety of the whole thing, no matter what you did. So it's something that it's typically considered to be a 
you have that in place for if you have to use it because otherwise if you have to use it there's no necessarily a good way to get it when you need to yes the, the legislation encompasses everything that it says it encompasses as potential purposes Not, I, I think I, I think I'm right when I say it couldn't, Ursula. We, we're talking specifically of the of the beachfront. That's what we're talking about. That's not the path. This path would no. It's it's water. Anything, just like the sound with the last hurricane, how it soaked all the water out and all the sound works. Now Mrs. Huss's house and all right. So it would affect that as well. It's not just beach, correct? It it no, could it could go surface. it could go beyond nourishment. Well, it could go. Good possibility. Not after tonight. I mean, I'd be right after tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a, that's a very good point, and, and the, my only response to that would be that beach nourishment is not a permanent fix. And so what Nags Head did, if I'm not mistaken, was a 10-year easement to allow them to come back if they had to within that time frame and re-nourish. Now, we're, go back one step. In fact, three or four people have mentioned this, and I think we are, we are unique in this respect. We are probably in the best shape of any beaches on the Outer Banks. There's no question about that. We don't have any of the problems that most of the beachfront properties have uh, in the towns. But we, we have the potential for having to deal with that. I, I want to thank all of you tonight for your comments, your, your recommendations, your, uh, your uh, resistance to your council, and, and giving us your views and your opinions. I think it's very important that we have that. We're going we're to discuss this. We're going to make a decision on our own whether to, whether to uh, table this for tonight, bring it up for further discussion, come back with a different proposal to you, We'll, we'll work it out among us and make the decision in just a few minutes. But we've got one more person in the back that wants to say something. One more quick question. Beach renourishment has been the emphasis throughout the whole evening. Right. I, I, you may, maybe weren't here when, I, when we first started the meeting, but I, I addressed that as one of the first things I said was, well, there, all right, there's no, my, one of my opening comments was there's no intent here in any way by this town to establish any sort of public access other than residents of the town. No intent. That, that's the article. That's not our, that's not our plan. 
The article provides a lot of things we could do, but we, we don't plan to do. Yeah, I know you could, and I appreciate the fact. I appreciate the fact you're not. <laughs> but we'll probably see parking lots before we see any beach no. renourishment. Because the beach renourishment, it's up to the property owner to keep their beaches or they lose the property. They have to pay for that. Uh, they pay, have to pay for a beach push. You're absolutely That's right. Fair. You're absolutely right. Any other comments? Yes, John. Mr. Mayor, as I remember, uh, Mr. Gallup said, uh, I think it was the list, you couldn't submit Part A unless you had the There's no, uh, there, like I said, the legislature can do whatever it wants. They can take whatever it wants. We could submit whatever they, they decide to submit. They, the issue is whenever you submit anything to them, one thing I did mention was that the legislature could do something different. <laughs> They could make it worse. And the harder, the more complicated it gets, I've found, the legislature is more likely to do not what you ask them to and not necessarily what anybody wants. So I think that what I've seen typically when these were passed, resolutions to ask the legislature to de delegation to do something, to put something forward, is you try and minimize what's going to be changed in the general statutes because that minimizes the complexity that they go through when they start changing things. And I think that's what it is. If this resolution is approved, does it automatically bring in any uh, federal government agency to offer support in terms of resources or money to the town? Or, uh, no. Not at all? No. no. And why is the provision in there for this public? Uh, the public act, the, the number yeah. 11. The yeah. reason for number 11 being yeah. in there along with number 10 is for the access along the beach question, whether or not there's any issue of the access along the beach as well. It's still an access. It's a public trust area. The, the issues of what is and what is not the public trust are um, essentially, you and I typically think it's the beach that we can walk on. But uh, the legal definition is not absolutely as clear as that. And that easement, part of being able to condemn that easement that goes along or ask for that easement that goes along the beach is considering that public access part of it as well because it will be part of the beach afterwards. Um, so, it, and that's, a, that's why that's there in association with the nourishment. Um, and it may have been there initially when there were federal funds. You know, it, part of why it was added there very, with whatever the very first towns were may have related somewhat to the parking part may have added in for the, the federal part of it, but the access along the beach is just as important for the authority to have it as the access from the road, which the town is clearly not talking about. Essentially, it was standard language that already existed in that. We have not requested that that be added. That is what was given to all the other towns and whatever process there was in determining what they needed, um, you know, it could have been three or four towns out of 20 that needed that kind of language, but it was added in the legislation. So we're just asking to be included with the legislation that exists. And those are the two most pertinent points, I believe, in, in the whole discussion. It is. And it, it they are the only two points that differ among any of the municipalities. 
the municipalities as listed in that statute. There are also specific, what they call local laws that may apply to other specific municipalities in different parts of the state. But for the coastal, what I call the coastal related provisions, number 10 and number 11, all of the towns who have done that in the past have done, have done both and have ended up with the um, quick take authority associated therewith. Yes. The other alternative here. I can't hear you. The other alternative, if you pass this, then we have the option of going to our legislators in Raleigh. You can easily do that either by petition, flood them with emails, personal calls, whole works, and, and, and that works completely. You're absolutely right. And that would be the appropriate thing to do if, in fact, you object to it. There's no question about that. And I, I would never, never tell you you couldn't do that. That's a, that's a good point, Jake. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, I'd, I'd like to take a, a, do, t have some more discussion on this among us uh, in, in a public forum. I'd like to know your thoughts. As I see it, we have a number of options. We can, uh, we can delay this decision, discuss it further, provide more information to the public about what, what, our, what, our, what the, the, real, the real ramifications are, to make them better, more aware. Um, we can delay the process. We can we can vote not to proceed with it. I think we need to discuss it first, though. I'd like to have you. Anyone would like to speak first is certainly welcome to do so. Any thoughts? Les, yes, Leslie. Yeah, I have been a uh, not have been a fan of uh, eminent domain since 2003, I believe it was, when the Supreme Court decided that the folks, uh, the, some some hotel builders up in Connecticut had the right to take over a community and uh, condemn a bunch of properties so they could build hotels for the benefit of the town's tax base. And I think that's, that's one of the things here that's, that's got uh, everybody's hackles up a little bit when we're talking about eminent domain. But w what we're talking about also is our beaches. Our beaches if you think about it, and I've been here about seven years and I've thought about it, are really the economic engine of Southern Shores. I mean, without those beaches, the folks that own all of those rental properties, they're not gonna have any rentals because those beaches are, are absolutely necessary for that. And it's necessary then for our tax base. So our, our beaches are our economic engine. And I think what we're asking here is that to protect that economic engine, to protect your beaches, all we're asking is another tool in the to toolbox that will give us quick access to do that. If, if, if we don't pass this or tonight, and a year or so down the road, we absolutely have to have something done with our beaches, our beach nourishment. And there's one person that holds out and we can't do anything. Are all of you then gonna come back and blame this council because we didn't act to do that? Thank you, Leo.
understand that. But can you guarantee me that 100% of those property owners are going to give us the right to do that? If there is one holdout, are you going to blame me for not voting for this? No, we have I'm not. No. No, we haven't. We haven't done that. The expedient group by saying, let's just pass this law and drop it. Sir, there's nothing worse than to have your properties taken from you. I agree. No, Absolutely okay, agree. So for, for you or anyone to come in and say, we need the right of way and easement without asking permission isn't the American way. It shouldn't be Southern Shore. But it wouldn't be without asking permission from the standpoint of the processes to go in and ask for easements first and get try to get permission. And then if someone wouldn't agree to it, that's what Larry's saying. If there's one holdout, what do we do with that one property? Because there is a whole process. Every I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. She said use eminent domain, domain, domain on that one property. And we can Which is what we're saying. And we can do that. Which is what we're saying. But right now, we don't have the eminent domain, correct me, for beaches. Correct. But that's right. what we're talking about, beaches. Mm -hmm. right. I know, but I was answering the lady's question back then. She, her, her response was use, use the right of eminent domain, which is, which is what we're saying, what you're saying you don't want us to do. You have other processes. There's no, there's no way to do it currently. No. If you had to do it, you could get it. Maybe. I can't predict the future. I'm sorry. There's no way to do it currently. John. then to pass quick take so we don't allow that property owner to do that because we go through the process yeah i don't either and i and, 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 I, and I hope it never happens but it could i don't know the particulars David? Yeah. Um, my thoughts on the issue. Um, sorry. I've been a resident of Southern Shore since 1984. So right now, I'm in beginning my 30th year here. Uh, I've seen a lot of things. I've been watching the town council here, started attending the meetings uh, in 1986. There's a lot of things that have happened. I don't know how many of you have been here for what period of time, but um, these things have, have, have occurred before. Um, going back, uh, one lady mentioned the uh, uh, Halloween storm of 91. Um, as far as Southern Shores was concerned, wasn't really much of a problem. The, uh, let's see, was the Nor'easter, no, there was a Nor'easter in 1989. And I can tell you what it did, and I have pictures here, if anybody wants to take a look at it. Uh, from 13th Avenue all the way to Hickory Trail, we lost 20 feet of the dune line. Basically, if you could figure out where the peak of our dune line is now, chop 20 feet off the front of it, and what you had was anywhere from, I'd say, an 8 to a 15-foot sheer drop to the beach. There was not a single access crossover uh, available to even get to the beach. Uh, the Civic Association went in and, and had to add five foot extensions to the supports on some of the stairs that remained. Um, I was involved uh, inadvertently uh, in helping to uh, organize 
the, uh, with, along with uh, Mickey Hayes of uh, Kitty Hawk Land Company, uh, the property owners in order to do a massive beach push, we're talking about 70 to 75 properties that were involved. We had one gap of four property owners that would not participate, they didn't want to spend a dime. We had another gap of two and another gap of one. So essentially the lady that mentioned something earlier is somewhat right. About 90% of the property owners participated, 10% did not. Uh, primarily in that case, they were endangering their own property more than they were their neighbors, although I wouldn't have wanted an oceanfront next to the gap. That was kind of dangerous. Um, I've always been skeptical of uh, nourishment projects. The one in Nags Head and whatever the towns of Kitty Hawk and Duck, Kill Devil Hills do, might change my mind in the future. Uh, I, I just can't really decide whether it's, it's worth the effort or not. Uh, dune stabilization, I've participated and organized uh, property owners on this beach before 1989 uh, who both worked with our company and were not working with our company. I work for Southern Shores Realty. Uh, planting grass, putting up sand fences, stuff like that. And it does work. And that's my preferred method of keeping our beaches the way they are. But we had one event that cut all of that out, just totally gone. Um, once you got onto the beach, pretty much it was a tangle of, of <laughs> debris, especially wire and fencing that was all mangled up. Uh, it was difficult to get that project done. It was not a town project, it was a private project. Uh, then we had the, the Ash Wednesday storm, uh, Part of the problem in sand drilling was the dunes were cut out and the water was running from the ocean to the sound uh, right there in sand drilling. I've got a picture. No, no, that's a. I, I said the Halloween storm. Okay. The, um, there was also the. March 93 storm, which were you there then? Um, at any rate, there, has, there have been events in the past here that have endangered the properties. We've had, in my memory, two oceanfront properties that were uh, actually in danger of being encroached on by the, the, the escarpment of the dune. Uh, we've just been lucky. It always came back. And part of that I attribute to the effort of rebuilding the dunes and maintaining them. But it's not always going to be that way. Uh, it, it, it didn't used to be that way in Duck right now where they're having the problems of people swimming pools and, and back decks falling into the ocean. Um, what my feelings are is well, number one, I'm not necessarily for uh, beach nourishment as, as a method of maintaining things. And after my experience with those two uh, beach pushes, I can tell you what the effect was. For about three summers, we didn't have an ocean front. At high tide, there was no beach in the areas where those beach pushes took place. Uh, it really concerned me at the time that it was ever going to come back. Eventually, it did. Um, I don't know. It might be under circumstances like that. Adding sand out there would be the answer to a better, uh, you know, protection for those areas. Um, but, uh, you know, I can assure you that there have been no private or secret meetings. There is no private or secret agenda to start a beach nourishment project. There, um, there is no intent to take anybody's property. Uh, the town certainly has, uh, as some of the examples people have, have expressed, you know, somebody was concerned about the, the sound front uh, playground or, or beach area. Um, 
the town already has both eminent domain, as you normally understand it, and quick take for a property like that. There's no question about that. And we've not had any, there's no effort about to do anything like that. Um, what I would hate to see is a situation where people want the town to take action, but the town hands are tied as far as uh, appropriately or quickly accessing the areas that need to be dealt with. That's, that's the question in the back of my mind is because I've seen it. Um, my personal estimate, the dredging project that we're now finishing would have been finished three to four years ago if we could have lined up the means and the properties and the ability to, to remove the spoils. Everybody in this town wanted that project to be done. Everybody, uh, the, the civic associations had to actually deed the canals to the town in order to get it done because they couldn't afford to. Uh, yet we still ran into numerous issues trying to deal with, with private property owners, the civic association, the CPOA, and trying to come up with a means of getting the spoil out of the canals because we don't have any access to it. So those questions, those problems have existed before. It's just this one, you know, it concerns me that in any way the town have its hands tied behind its back and responding to an emergency. Thank you, David. Bill, you have any thoughts? Well, I've anguished with this uh, resolution since uh, we talked about it at the last meeting. And I've read that statute uh, more than once. I've read everybody's emails that I've seen or been privy to seeing. Had conversations with uh, some people that, uh, like tonight, weren't in favor of what was going on. I've had conversations with others that uh, they were in favor of it. And then I had some that just didn't have any opinion. So now with that said, tonight we can kick the can down the road. Do nothing, don't approve the resolution, and shift the burden to us at a later time or a future council when we may have a crisis facing us. And my experience has been when you've got a crisis facing you, we all think everybody's going to respond in a logical way, but my experience is that normally doesn't always happen. And when you delay something, have to face that crisis, whether it's this board, council, or another, there's always costs that get added to it. So when you think about that, I'd say kick the can down the road and we'll all go home and you'll go home happy. But there's a business side of me that says, why do we have the guests that come here in the summertime? It's not because we have a big amusement park not because we have some large historic area. It's our beaches. And those guests are going to expect <coughs> our town to, main, to preserve and maintain those beaches. And sooner or later, either this council or another one is going to have to face some type or form of beach reconstruction or construction. I hate the word nourishment. And that's where we're going to have the problem. And I'm confident that we can get to the beach by the SSCA, CPOA, although the SSCA owns more of the majority, or all of the accesses, I'm confident we can negotiate a reasonable way or easement to get there. That's not my concern. My concern is parallel side of it and we all say all the and there's what 200 plus yeah, 215 uh, or plus or minus whatever number you want to look at <coughs> and uh, God bless us if all of them would agree I'd love it but let's face reality we've all been through some of this not everybody's going to agree and 
maybe the 215 tonight, tomorrow, a year from now would agree. But we, what happens when they sell that property and a new owner comes in and says, and you aren't gonna probably like my term, and they say, no, but hell no. Now, that's where we would need what we're trying to talk about tonight. That's what we need there. And if we can get everybody to agree, I'd love it. I, I'm one that likes to negotiate. But there's a point when you get past where you can't negotiate, you know, it uh, gets, then you gotta get to the telling. You know, I guess it's more not negotiating, it's the selling, and then you gotta get to the telling. And that's where I think we could have a challenge. And eventually, we're gonna have one of these storms. And it's gonna be a category four. I went through uh, Isabel, and I was a brand newbie in this town then. And I knew what challenges we had then. And we talked about FEMA. I had those suckers almost convinced to help us pay for those cross 34 crossovers, which I was president of the Civic Association at the time until he went up there and saw my signs, or the signs we had up that said private, and for the use of sub and chores only. Well, that was the end of those funds. But I got plenty of donations and help from some other people to get them restored. So, with that said, you know, there's the economic, potential in economic impact, uh, because if, if our homeowners can't rent, they're either gonna get rid of them uh, they're going to do something with them. They're, they're, they'll survive. But it's going to have an impact on the town. And it's going to have, if we don't have that revenue, then we got to look at what services that we may continue to provide. Or, God bless, and I hate this one either, also, well, having to raise taxes to cover it just to survive. That's the part we're looking at. I don't like all those images, but there's, I think we're down to, asking ourselves two questions. The town needs to, and this council needs to ask, ask or answer this. Are we in charge, going to be in charge of our destiny or are we going to let destiny direct us? And I, coming from the business world, prefer to have, be in control of my destiny. And that's what I've got to say. Jody, anything else you want to add? No, I pretty much agree with what uh, Leo was saying because that's basically been my main concerns with this whole process. So I don't have a lot more to add at this point. I, I call for a motion to, uh, to accept the resolution. Give me, give me the correct terminology. I want to ask, ask for a vote. Do you want to make a motion or are you asking? I want to make a motion to, to call for the vote. On the to, a, to accept the resolution as pre presented. As presented? Yep. 2014-02-01. I'd make a motion, Council, that we accept the resolution as, as presented, uh, number 2014-02-01. Town requested resolution of the town council of the town of Southern Shores, North Carolina, requesting the North Carolina General Assembly to consider adoption of certain legislation authorizing the town to acquire property for the purpose stated in GS 40A 3, B1, 10, and 11. Be able to make such acquisitions via the procedures allowed by GS General Statutes 40A, 42A, and 2. Do I have, do I have a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Any further discussion? I'm sorry. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry. Thank you. No, not thanking you. You got some more business. 
We we have some we have some unfinished business. You're welcome to leave, but we have some unfinished business. The meeting has not been adjourned. Oh, that's a shame. Next order of business is a, a beach lifeguard activities report uh, from Merrick Dabrowski under new business. Merrick? Oh, he's no, he's got a thumb drive in. He wants yeah, to plug it in. He's got a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> You're too willing. <laughs> um, as a property owner in Southern Shores, I appreciate you looking out for us. I do. Thank you. Thank you. I know that you're not looking at individual aspects of it. So. Um, oh, do I get a little, get a little uh, thing? Thinker, switch my mic. Remote. Which one? Which one? Look. Yeah, it works. We get one of those. It's a shame. It is a shame. It's a real shame. Okay. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Eric Grassi. I've been. You got to talk into that, please. Oh, okay. you're on candy Great. Uh, Merrick Dabrowski, I run the lifeguard service here in Southern Shores. I also run the lifeguard service in Duck. Um, and this is, we, 2013 was the eighth year, I believe. So that's why it says serving Southern Shores <laughs> for eight years. Okay, that's not gonna work. There it is. Um, got lifeguards are on duty from 10 to six every day, but we actually are a 24 hour service. Go ahead. Uh, we have quads that patrol zones, which we have two zones in Southern Shores and uh, with the capability of doing three zones if we have to. Go ahead. Uh, 2013 recap, which is basically why we're here. Just keep flipping and give me a couple seconds. Uh, total visitation for the town of Southern Shores was uh, 156, 586 through September 18th, and through Memorial Day, the Labor Day, it's uh, 141,033. Uh, to compare that to the town of Duck, they had over 400,000. Um, <coughs> and I can tell you most of those are 
between the pier and the town of Southern Shores town line. Uh, red flag days, we only had three red flag days uh, during the season that we put them up. Uh, these are just some pictures of some rip currents and the possible uh, hazards that you can see on the beach. And I just keep flipping through those. There's just another rip current. More rips, more, keep going. Uh, rescues, the total rescues in the town of Duck were was 117. And then in the town of Southern Shores, it was 43. Um, we did have one fatality in the town of Southern Shores, and that was a, a body surfer who, uh, best we can surmise, uh, <coughs> pearled and jammed his head and, and broke his neck. Um, and that was uh, uh, the only fatality that we had that was water related. Okay. Uh, total medical calls in Duck, and I use it as a comparison because we are side by side. Um, there was 100 and. What is a paramedic? 103. 103. 105? 3. You said 3? 103 as opposed to 38. 38. 38. I uh, didn't bring my notes. A lost patrons in Duck, there was 10 or 8? 10. Ten. 10. And then there was four. Four. 4 in the town of Southern Shores. And lost, it could have just been they came up to the lifeguard and said, where is uh, South, or East Dogwood? And they were right, right at the East Dogwood lifeguard stand. And that happens periodically, even though the, the, all of the uh, accesses are marked or are supposed to be marked. OK. Educational advisories, the town of Duck, we had 27, roughly 2,700. In the town of Southern Shores, it was? 1351. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's what it says. Yeah, okay. 1351, I thought it was a little bit more. Uh, a lot of those educational advisories this past summer were about tents. Um, and the same thing with the town of Duck, it is mostly about tents and telling people we need to, you know, take, remove all your beach items at the end of the day. Um, I got the wrong picture up there, don't I? That's okay. Uh, what you see is, uh, is that the, the uh, Frisbees or something that they hand out in the town of Duck that have the ordinances, and I just threw it in there. Anyway, move along. Uh, tents, these are just some pictures of tents. Obviously, that's north of the research pier. And that is uh, some more of why we came up with the ordinance for the tents. And you can see that's in the southern part of town, goes all the way down, and you can see into southern shores as well. Okay. Uh, later in the day. Keep going. And basically, they were leaving them out at night so they'd be, have their spot for the next morning? Or? Exactly. Uh, come in and you place your two, two reasons. Not only do you get your spot, too. And you don't have to lug that stuff over the beach right. every day. Right. Um, so in essence, we've curtailed that so that the beaches are passable at night for everybody. Mm -hmm. We estimated, didn't estimate, actually physically counted the number of tents on the beach in Duck on any given day. And there was 300 or better, 300 or better. 300 are better serving probably anywhere from six to 10 people, each one. And those were just the tents. There was a lot of people that still use umbrellas and a lot of people that go out there with, with no shade at all. So uh, in the town of Duck, we were looking at roughly a population of anywhere from 5,000 to 7,000 people during the course of the day. Uh, I'm throwing these numbers out. There is a point that I'm gonna make towards the end. Um, and someone had asked me a question earlier, not today, but in a, another day. Um, and then here you can see this is one of the most more populated beaches during the day where the where the, most of the umbrellas and all the equipment is taken off okay keep going uh, that's one of the reasons one of the other reasons why we came up with the ordinance was we were getting way too much trash left on the beach primarily this kind of trash we still get some and when it when it's like this um, well, we, we just cut it up and take it off the beach it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, we try and systematically do that. So if it sits there for a couple days 
it's because we're waiting for the next time that we have an empty pickup to go along and cut the stuff up and, and put it in there and take it all off at the same time. Okay. Keep going. Still keep going. Uh, castles to craters, some of the things that happen on the beach, people creating little castles. If you look at the bottom of the crater, there is a head nice. in that crater. Mm. Uh, this is why we like to keep holes at a minimum. If there's any justification, this is the biggest one. Uh, there have been deaths, and these are deaths that are easily prevented by not allowing people to dig huge holes. The worst part about the huge holes is people can fall in them and hurt themselves, believe it or not, even in the sand. Okay. But especially if they leave them at night and you're walking in the dark. Especially at night. Yeah. Uh, for us, the lifeguards, just to give you a brief idea, our preseason training, go ahead. As CPR, keep going. First responder, which is all first aid training, and then physical training. All this totals about 100 hours. Uh, the first aid is roughly 40 hours, and then all the open water classroom stuff is, is, a, is around 60 hours, and we're actually in the water uh, close to 30 hours out of that 60 hours of, of what we call open water training. Okay. And we do a lot of swimming. Patrolling and scanning. Go ahead. The stands, as you can see, are really responsible only for about 150 yards on either side. But they do, every, every lifeguard stand has binoculars, and so they're looking up and down the beach constantly. And we have the quad zones, which are two to two and a half miles. Uh, again, if I feel like I would benefit from having a third four-wheeler out, I have a third four-wheeler out. Um, we make up for it on other days. Okay. Roughly population is about 2,000. Peak, peak. I know you've all been out there on days when it's been overcast and it looks like a ghost town. But we're talking about peak days, and, and we know when those days are, are going to occur. Uh, and the lifeguards are out there about 8 to 10 hours. Wildlife, educate, beach strandings, and turtle watch. So we also take care of all of those things as well. I don't know if anyone saw the uh, leatherbacks that we had a couple years ago that washed up on the beach. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do is, in, in cooperation with wildlife, we help them in any way we can, and typically they call us and say, okay, get it buried. And I'll call the town manager and say, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> those, the, those are the biggest, they're a lot more difficult to deal with than a whale. Um, they're just really big, and we, I think we buried two that year in Southern Shores, and uh, um, I buried a couple up in Duck as well, one up in Duck. I had a whale a few years ago. Okay. Clean up. Uh, the basking shark that we buried. There's a turtle. That's not a, uh, that's not a leatherback. A leatherback, if you see it, a full-grown leatherback, it kind of looks like a VW floating in the water. I mean, they're, they're that big, and you're, you're sitting there, and you're going, holy cow, where did that thing come from? And, and it's, uh, it's quite an awesome sight. Communications. We obviously are hooked into 911, two-way direct. Uh, obviously, it's the fire chief in Duck. And then, go ahead, she's talking to me. <laughs> so we use a separate system, just so you understand. We use a VHF system um, amongst ourselves. So from the Hilton to the North uh, County line, the lifeguards are in contact by a VHF. Um, and then through them, or from them, it goes to me, and then if we need 911, if we need additional assistance, we'll call, I'll call on the 800 system that the county is paid for and that every town is paid for. We just try and limit the, the amount of traffic that's on the uh, 800 service. Other services I provide, and we've done it, and, and uh, after Sandy, we helped clean up the beach. Um, I try and do that as, as an added service and basically get line up everything. Okay, go ahead. I manage this project, staff coordination, equipment, and also the dumpsters. Even though you pay for the dumpsters, you pay for the staff coordination. You don't for, pay for me doing it and some of the equipment that comes with it. The trucks are already there and they're already available. If we need larger trucks, um, we try and use the, the uh, 
the military trucks that we have that can go on the beach and haul the equipment off. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mary. That's good. Great presentation. Really um, the one, I think the one question, and I believe it was you, we were talking about this, Tom, at their, uh, after the uh, Duck Town meeting was the services that we provide and, and what we feel we need in the future. And, and, and I think I've talked to Peter about it as well, is that right now I think our beach is pretty well covered as far as lifeguards. In a perfect world, we'd have a lifeguard at every access point. Um, but we're looking at, you know, cost and basically use. And so uh, I think that we're in a, we're in a pretty good situation. I, the only way it would increase, or I could see it increasing, is in the event of all the parking that everybody was talking about before. <laughs> well, <let's> see. <laughs> but our, our parking lots, and one of the things that we are going to do this summer is we're going to do uh, we're going to do better beach counts at the at the lifeguard stands. Um, in the in the areas where the the new stands with the parking and everything because we have seen an increase in the population that's using this, the uh, East Dogwood Beach and also the 144 Ocean Boulevard which is at the triangle flashing right. yellow light so anybody have any questions I have a question on the going back to the tents for a second because you said it was under education yes what is your process still when you see the tent do you just put something on it as a note to identify it well, we try to start before that um, and what we're trying to do is, is get everybody on the beach, and, and uh, including the town manager. He's out there telling people. But we try and start telling people as soon as we see them with the tent. And it's not just tents. It's beach equipment. So we try and advise everybody on the beach early in the week. We start on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We hit them really hard as far as saying you're not allowed to leave your equipment out on the beach. It's subject to removal. So you remove it at the end of the day if they're gone? And at the end of the day, we'll remove it. We've, and, and through the process of, of uh, trial and error, we've come up with what I think is the best um, time frame and what we've done. And, and that's, I think it's 5 o'clock. Is that right? Anything left unattended mm -hmm. after 5 o'clock is subject to removal. So what that does is it still gives us some daylight in order to remove stuff. Whereas in the past, when we didn't have it at 5, it was like 7 o'clock. It was dark. I'm sitting here driving a five-ton military vehicle down the beach with six guys picking up stuff at night. And, and you it, still take them to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the public works building? We take them to the public works. <laughs> okay. Good. And in most cases, it, we've seen a really high response as far as people not leaving stuff on the beach um, and, and understanding what we're trying to do and saying, well, this is just one more. I mean, I've had people come right up to me and say, we're never coming here again. And, you know, I apologize and say, you know, it's unfortunate uh, because what we're trying to do is better our beaches and keep our beaches clean and safe for everybody. So, right. Thank you. Peter? Mr. Mayor, if I could just comment, and Merrick, I do have a question for you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think they'd be You're interested doing it anyway. here. <laughs> um, the council members, I think every one of them mentioned the fact that people come as visitors to Southern Shores for one reason only, and that's because we have the beaches. And I just wanted to commend um, our surf rescue service in Merrick. Um, I think this is the fourth, the past summer was the fourth summer I was here. And th there's a huge difference in this service today than what the old fashioned lifeguard service was 35 back the, years back ago. Back in the day. Back in the day when <laughs> you and I were out there That's working right. for J&H or LBS, it's totally different. And, the town can be thankful of the personnel that Surf Rescue puts on the beach because they truly are the ambassadors for the town. Mm -hmm. These are the visitors that come, pay the occupancy tax. We want them to keep coming back. And the lifeguards that sit on the stands and row truly um, have been vetted by Merrick and his wife and staff, and they're trained, and they know how to talk to people, and they know how to welcome people, and thank you, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, et cetera, et cetera. It's just been a pleasure to work with that service. Um, I hope you'll be able to bring the guards back at our June the 3rd council meeting this year and introduce them like you did oh, last definitely. year. And the final thing, I wanted to ask, there's one on medical incidents. I think the council would be interested in kind of getting a briefing from you on that protocol because I know you, we're not, your guards are not EMTs. No. If you could just glance through what happens when there's a medical incident about getting somebody off the beach 
what y'all do and don't do and waiting for EMS. Okay. Um, most of those medical incidents that you were seeing are Band-Aids or uh, some sort of small scrape where they, somebody needs a little bit of something. But in, in the case where we did have the one drowning, um, EMS obviously uh, was alerted starting out because CPR was already in progress when the call came through to uh, the 911 call center. So CPR was in progress, EMS is alerted, we respond. Um, at that point, the subject was already on the beach. And for us, we step back and allow the paramedics to do their job. Um, the volunteer firefighters come in as their EMTs and do what they can do, and then from them, when they hand it off to the paramedics, they're the ones that are in charge. In that particular incident, uh, there were several doctors on the scene and nurses and, and, uh, and a paramedic from out of town. We go into a support role, and that is if the subject needs to be taken off the beach or helped off the beach or, you know, we need to get more equipment or whatever, we're there. So I'll have a supervisor, either myself or Bob Mack or, or Bill Ryan or um, I have three other supervisors. If I threw off, out their names, you probably wouldn't know. But <clears throat> those people will determine how much help is, uh, additional help is needed, keep maybe one guard, and everybody else goes back to doing what they're supposed to do. Our primary responsibility is to make sure that people in the water are safe. And if we're all standing around watching, uh, you know, higher professionals do their job, we're not able to do our job. So then we, we continue and, and go off and leave the support that's needed. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we brought a truck out, loaded the patient in the, in the truck, and took him off the beach at the, at the closest access, which was the Hillcrest Street Beach Access. Um, if they wanted to carry him over, and, and we leave that up to the paramedics, if they wanted to carry him over, we carry him over the, over the dune at the, at the closest access. Mm -hmm. So that's where we go in, in the medical emergencies, is we go into support role as soon as it's above our level, and our level is the first responder level, which is below the basic EMT level which is a, it's a 43 hour course. Very good. Very interesting. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your report. Thanks, Mary. Any, okay. any, any, of you, any of you have questions for him? Any <laughs> member of council? Thanks again, I appreciate I'm sorry to keep you here so late too, I apologize. Uh, it's quite all right. You've gotten up a lot sooner, but. <laughs> <laughs> We're down to uh, other items, town manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very quickly, um, I did want to report to you tonight that the that Salmon's Dredging Incorporated is on its last leg of dredging, the back canal. Um, he reported in to the Public Works Director today that he's confident that he's going to make it by midnight of February 14th. Um, I will tell you that we did apply to the Division of Coastal Management for a 14-day extension based on the snow days that we did have and ice days and they couldn't get into the canal. Hopefully with the water temperatures still mighty cold um, and the fact that we're at the very back of the system that Division of Coastal Management will take that into consideration. The main comment in agency will be Wildlife Resources Commission and U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So hopefully we'll be able to get that extension but Mr. Salmons seemed pretty confident today. He thinks he's going to make it. They are working seven days a week. They're working on Sundays and they are on a high profile street um, carrying spoil out on juniper. But still, uh, all indications are that we'll get through and uh, look forward to the day when I can tell you the first meeting in March that we've finished this project and I will be getting with each of you about trying to develop some sort of um, release for the public to kind of describe a little bit about the history, et cetera. Um, also, at the March meeting, um, I would like to discuss with council um, and Mr. Anloff, the town's consultant engineer, and I together um, about a plan for um, handling maintenance of the canals for the next few years at least. Um, we had discussed this with the mayor and with the town attorney. I think Mr. Anloff and I today came upon a rough plan and would like to bring that to council's attention in March if we could and just for general discussion. Um, the North Dune Loop uh, rebuild project has been let, Barnhill Construction has been awarded that bid for that project, should begin right away, hopefully when the weather breaks and there's warmer weather, they, they will pretty much start pr very soon, probably next week with the prep work. We'll also put out for bid next week the uh, 
Duckwoods Drive project as well, advertise that. So that would be um, the last repair bid, and then the other four rebuild projects that go out will be right behind that. Capital Improvement Planning Committee continues its work, and we already have the prioritized um, list of items to go back through the committee and then hopefully bring back to the council once we look at that. Um, the beach stabilization project moved pretty quickly. The beach grass has been planted um, by the contractor and fertilized. So at this point, we've got two more fertilizations and also a um, planting of sea oats in certain places that'll happen. And I'm, um, the public works director told me that was not going to happen until later in the spring. So I think I may have mistakenly told a couple of council members that we were starting that sooner, but that's when the, the weather has to be just right and change. So we'll be doing that later in the spring. Um, one final item, um, at uh, the interest of uh, council member Holland, I did um, make inquiry with Piedmont Natural Gas, who has a franchise here in the town of Southern Shores, as you know, about their continued interest in marketing and surveying residents who might be uh, interested in converting to natural gas. Um, the marketing person, Lauren Hill, has been in Southern Shores. She's actually contacted some of the residents that have called her, and she came back, and I've met with her twice. Um, we're cooperating with them to provide them some names and addresses of uh, residents near the stub outs of the natural gas line. As you know, natural gas goes down Dogwood Trail to the country club and stops there. There's a formula that Piedmont uses for marketing purposes, a feasibility formula for a person within 100 feet has to convert to everything but a hot water heater, all the appliances, but a hot water heater. And then if they were within 200 feet, up to 200 feet, excuse me, the hot water heater has to also be converted and they'll run the line to their house. That formula is used um, when, after they get an idea about the number of residents that are interested. So Piedmont has asked me, would we be interested in co cooperating with them and possibly some of the larger homeowners associations with giving an informational meeting? And certainly we would. And so we'd be working with Ms. Hill about doing that. It's either on a weekday evening or a weekend to bring information to those who might be interested in converting. It's gonna be a little bit of an education process. Somebody a, ways, a long way from the existing line is not going, it's not gonna be feasible probably right off of one household, two households, but at least this information meeting will explain to residents what it takes for them to get it to their house. Um, so that's good news. I think that will answer a lot of questions, hopefully, among citizens in the town about the availability of natural gas conversion. At the moment, it just goes down South Dogwood. That's the only line It, it right goes now. down South Dogwood, but it also comes up 158, and there's a stub out in this shopping center next door the shop, okay. to the north. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, on the corner of 158 in Juniper Town Bank has it, has natural gas. So there's potential to continue running it up. Juniper is just a leapfrog process as far as the feasibility. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, just wanted to report that to you. Thank you. And I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. That's my report for tonight. Thank you, Peter. Ben? I'm, I don't have anything else to report, Mr. Mayor. If anybody has any questions, I'm here. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to thank both of you. Uh, for your efforts tonight, and, and not just for tonight, but for the preparation you put into this, this effort that we uh, went through earlier this evening. I think it, it didn't turn out the way the people in the audience wanted it to turn out, but I think long term, I think we did the right thing. I want to thank council for their, for their support and their, uh, their efforts also in this, and your understanding, and, and I, I particularly appreciate the way, you, um, the way you presented the case the best you could to a very, um, <laughs> Not a very sympathetic audience. Adversarial. <laughs> Adversarial, okay. Your, 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 your choice, Leo. Um, have, if we had to do over, I'd put Merrick ahead of the, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ahead of the old business. <laughs> and I apologize to him. He's not here. But we should have gotten him first and then got the old business. Um, that's all I have tonight. I, I appreciate you all coming out. The ones who are still here, I appreciate you hanging on. 
Uh, I'm sorry the people that were here didn't get what they wanted, and it, it, those things happen. Uh, I'm not sure we did the right thing, but I think we did. Leo, I'll start with you. Uh, I just have uh, well, one thing, that, you know, well, two things to comment on. Yeah, it maybe didn't turn out what uh, everybody wanted. Uh, history will tell us whether we did the right thing or not. And then we've got to move forward. We've made the decision. We just got to move. The other thing is, for any of you that uh, had any old uh, medicine or prescriptions you don't know what to do with, uh, tomorrow from 9 to 12 noon, the Outer Banks uh, Hospital Urgent Care Center in the Marketplace, you can drop your old prescriptions off. Uh, the drop off of your unused and unwanted prescriptions or over the counter medications and pick up a goodie bag inside the OBH Urgent Care Center. The Dare County Sheriff's Department will be on site to collect the, uh, the medications that you may have had expired or don't need. So it's all that, day tomorrow? All, pardon? All day tomorrow? Uh, no, uh, 9 to noon. It's a three hour window. Thank you. So I know I've got a couple of, I think, or some my wife hung on to for my mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Larry? Um, after the, the, the controversy that we enjoyed this after this evening, I was wondering if um, how the, the council felt about pursuing one of the suggestions that I heard a lot of the audience coming up with is to see if we could get uh, some sort of uh, uh, consent from the entire ownership of the beachfront properties. Uh, that would be uh, a way of saying that, you know, we, we listen to you, and here's something that uh, we that, that we're trying and to do. Uh, failing that, of course, uh, we could say, well, we tried, and this is th this is one of the reasons that we passed the legislation. Or if we if we achieve it, then we've achieved it, and we won't need to use it. Uh, and, and that's just a, a question for the council, and that's all I have. Thank you, Larry. Is that feasible, Peter? I mean, then the town attorney and I could talk about that and see what types of challenges we would have without a project in the wind and see what we could exactly. come up with. I, I think it's a good suggestion, though, Larry. I really do. I thought I picked up on the same thing you did. I think they would be much more receptive to it if we had, uh, if we had been able to do a, a, a survey or Before. some kind of a beforehand. Yes, yeah, so I give them give them the benefit of the doubt there. They they had a good good argument, a good point. I'm sorry, David, you're you're up. Other than the fact, if anybody wants to stick around a little longer and look at some pictures, of <laughs> uh, yeah. Other than that, I have nothing else. So, David, could I suggest you put those up on the website? Maybe. Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah, Peter, put them on the website. Yeah. I don't really have much to add, other than because it was certainly an enjoyable evening. But um, having been through these things before, it's really difficult when you're in the room with people who all feel one way when we're trying to look out for the whole town as a whole, and it seems like we're going against them when we're really not. I, as you say, time will tell whether we've made the right decision or not. Thank you, Joe. It's I difficult. With you. I, I don't know whether I can say this or not, but I think it's time for some of us to get a, get a concealed carry permit. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody has any further business, I'm, uh, I'm ready to adjourn. I'm so ready to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.